Hey, strangers. Welcome to another episode of The Strange Sessions. As always, I am Krista. With me is Kurt and special guest host today, Kurt's <laughs> stomach. My stomach is in rare form. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but it's like... He switched up his breakfast routine. And his yeah, I went to Quick like, Trip what? instead. But it was just a, a egg, <laughs> ham, and... Wow. Yeah, egg, ham, an egg and ham croissant. I wish the mic would, catch, would pick this well, up it's, because it's, it's comical. It's like doing it at all different... Like notes yeah. too. It'll do like a high pitched one and like a low pitched one. <laughs> totally. So if you hear that in the background, it is not an EVP. It no. is my stomach. Uh, I haven't. Surprise, surprise! I haven't felt good lately, yeah. so I've been. I also went like three days without eating because I just had no appetite. Hey, that reminds me. If you're just tuning in and you don't know don't about the titillating hear, twenty, yeah, you, and you don't want to hear me complaining about being sick and the weather, um, <laughs> weather. or a taste test or housekeeping, please. Hit pause, check the show notes. Kurt has posted the uh, timestamp of the actual topic start. Yes, he did. You can skip over this. We won't be offended. No. We'll secretly judge you for the rest of our lives, but that's fine. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. So back to you not feeling well. <laughs> uh, I just didn't, haven't eaten, but then I went back to eating and uh, like I just not sleeping great and uh, we think it might have been because I didn't have an air conditioner for most of the summer, but mm -hmm. I just got the new one this week and I was thinking it was going to be like my old one, but I got like a fancy dancy one now. Ooh. Like I'm obsessed with being able to turn it on and off from my phone. Oh, stop. Which is so cool. That's really <laughs> yeah. cool. Do you see what you did yeah, there? I see what mm -hmm. I did there. But uh, so yeah, now it's actually nice so i don't know if some of it was because my apartment gets like with my app with my new air conditioner i can check what the temperature is in my apartment and there was one morning it wasn't even really warm out and i checked it and it was 84 in my apartment because i'm an upstairs apartment and it always gets super hot mm, so yeah. i wonder if a lot of my not feeling good was just it could be being are you feeling better now that you have the ac uh, a little bit <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's just like i'm exhausted non-stop my sleeping's been all goofy so i don't know if something's wrong something probably is wrong but i can't really you know with my insurance if i go to a doctor it's going to be like we need you to go to this specialist we need mm. you to go to this specialist we need you to go to this specialist. yeah but so, preventative care is yes, a lot less expensive yeah, than it is but i do feel better now than i felt last week so it could have easily been the the heat situation and god Maybe I feel, less quick trip I feel, and more vegetables <laughs> may, that's the thing is like i wanted i, I had do two bucks trip. i had two bucks one day and i went to rob's the grocery store because i was like craving canned fruit hmm. i went there i could not find a can of fruit for under two bucks it was like four bucks for a can of pineapple wow i'm like seriously it's just insane how much stuff mm -hmm. is lately uh, that's enough of my griping though. But yeah, I feel better. <laughs> it's been hotter than the hubs as well. Yeah, like but not as 90s. bad as not as bad as around like in Texas and oh, yeah. Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vegas. You know, when I have yeah. friends in Arizona that send me the 117 degrees, 118 oh, heck no. degrees. Heck no. No, and I'm right complaining where, about 95. Yeah, I don't even like it was. I don't even know if it's ever got up to 90 yet. This here it like, has. Not by me. Like where I am by the. No, lake. I wouldn't say by my house because yeah. I'm by the lake too. Yeah. But like out yeah. west by work, it's been hot. Yeah. And humid for sure. But it's enough complaining about the weather. And Canada smokes really uh yeah. you know, messing with us still. Yep. Uh, shout outs to our newest strangers, and those are Ashley Jackson and Jessica Marlowe Higgins. Welcome, ladies. Uh, Ashley left a really sweet comment in the in the strangers mm -hmm. you know liking the podcast and saying that she loves that we mix it up and we'll have true crime here and paranormal here and just weird story here so thank you so much all like, high strangeness like i wanted when we started this my idea was to base it a lot off of thinking sideways and thinking sideways would do that they would do true crime and the next one would be like skinwalker ranch like they did a lot of mixing it up so i think I it's all just stuff do... we're interested in it is too. like anything that's mysterious mm -hmm. you know i thought about having one about that that woman who said she saw the 
kid and that turned into a hole. Oh, that? Yeah, that turned. And then she disappeared. And yeah, then, I don't and think there's anything strange about it. Arre- no, she was arrested for mm-hmm. falsifying stuff. And yeah. It's like, oof. How about the lady on the airplane, though, who saw something that wasn't there and got off the plane? Yeah. That could be a story, but I haven't heard anything more about it. I would have thought that woman would have come out by now yeah. explaining what happened. Yeah. And there's all memes about it now. And there's some that are just right. hilarious where, yeah. you know, she's like, he's not, he doesn't even exist or whatever. And then the camera pans back and it's Grimace from McDonald's standing, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, like there's yeah. all sorts of funny ones. Totally. The one right now, the, the weird meme, TikTok meme thing I'm obsessed with is the really mad guy that goes over and starts punching on the window of the car. Oh yeah, I've seen that and too. And it's always the guy inside is always puts on a song where it's like going to the beat and he's <laughs> yeah. like, you know, and the guy's just pounding on the window. I love that his wife walks over and she's like, enough and he's like oh, okay yeah and he walks away yeah. I'm like, and then what in, the these, heck? in these memes the guy wants to used to keep going so he rolls down the window and yells something and the guy comes back and then he turns up the music so crazy but yeah it's People just so just unstable they are they it's like, like it's, what would it's lead to that it's weirding me out how unstable i feel society yeah, is getting totally it's like it's bad yeah Ugh. But anyway, thank you, straight new strangers, for yeah, joining wow. our group. Yeah, wow. <laughs> that got dark. <laughs> we're se- we're segueing a lot today. I want to give an extra special shout out to Kayla. I just said shout out. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm giving an extra special shout out to Kayla. Kayla, we love you. Yeah, love you, Kayla. Kayla's got a story coming up later. Yeah, so she that's does. cool. Yeah. Um, do we have housekeeping? Um, thank you, Aaron, for coming on the yeah. last episode. People seem to really enjoy. Uh, the Holy Hill and Cranky uh, Kurt. <laughs> cranky, cranky Kurt's cranky the whole Kurt vibe. And fussy Kurt. Yeah, Fussy <laughs> Kurt. Uh, Aaron always says it's funny because he says it's almost like clockwork. Like he says once Literally. it gets to be like two o'clock, he's like, there's just this change where all of a sudden I get crabby. <laughs> you know? That so, was me yesterday. I don't know what uh, my problem was. I've been crabby a lot lately. Um, one of the next upcoming side sessions for our coffee subscribers. Uh, after the actual episode, I'm going to put in the hour long full audio of mm. Aaron and I <laughs> fighting and bantering and <laughs> yeah. laughing and talking. So that'll be in one of the next ones. Do we have any other housekeeping? Um, just a reminder, we have a book club. Uh, we're halfway. Well, I don't, I'm not quite halfway through. It's a really good I, book though. We're currently reading Imaginary Friend. It's a great book. It's a big I'm loving book. loving it. Yeah, it's it a is big a big book. One. And I was thinking it would drag. Small print. But. Uh, no, it's humming the, right the, along. The be- I thought about this yesterday. The best compliment I can give this book is that reading this book reminds me of the first time I read Stephen King's mm. It. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because it has it's that like feel I never it, knew right? what was coming, and it's always like I just got to a part with uh, with uh, you'll get to there, and there's really no spoilers here. But he's watching the Bad Cat cartoon, okay, in the living room, and it was just like what happens there reminds me. It's like so much oh, of it, and just okay. like not knowing what where I don't. I have still have no idea where the book is going. Yeah, I have no idea what's going to happen. You know, I do love books that center around the lives of adolescents for some reason. Yes. There's just something yeah. really like, yep. I don't know, magical about that, yeah. even though it's I'm assuming this is going to be kind of a scary story. I mean, it's there's been some creepy stuff it's creepy. that's happened. The hissing for lady. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. The hissing lady. No, thank you. <laughs> but um, yeah. So I think we are recording that episode. August. Gotta bring up. I can't. Oh, I can do it here. Calendar. Um. Is it the 12th? I don't know. I think it's the 12th. So you still have two weeks. Yeah. And then after that, we're going to do the last house on Needless Street. Yes. And again, I want to give a warning, a trigger warning. There's child abduction in the book and there is abuse, child abuse in the book. you say there's animal abuse too? Sort of. Okay. But I'm just going to tell you right now, stick with it. Okay. Like, yeah, like I was like, there were times that I'm like, I don't want to even read this anymore, but I did. And I'm glad I don't want to say why, Okay, but I'm just going to say stick with it because it's worth it in the end. Okay. That's all I got for that. All right. Um, no, no other housekeeping. Should we do a taste test? We'll do a taste test. It's this, a beverage. It is a beverage. Okay. So, uh, my cousin Stephanie and... Taylor and Addison got this for us. And Corey, they dropped it off at Corey's house. So I went there and picked it up. There's a bunch of things in there. So I reached in yesterday and grabbed one at random. Okay. Uh, Stephanie, Taylor, and Addison, they know us. 
So okay. Here's, oh, God, here's, I'm scared. Here's, here's what we got today. <laughs> it is, you ready? I'm ready. Oh, am I ready? Grandpa Joe's Soda Pickle Pop. Oh, Pickle Pop. Okay. Pickle Pop I'm Soda. I'm not afraid. No, because there's a Mr. Q Cucumber Soda. Like, I love, I love cucumber soda. And I feel like we've tried pickle flavored sodas before. Like it, it has the potential to be really good if it's not like super overpoweringly. I don't know, but if it, I have my car keys with a uh, opener. Oh, heard the pop. You're gonna smell like dill all day. Krista's using her shirt bottom to open the dill. You gonna take a sniff? Oh, okay. That's that. Oh, that's not promising. No. That was not promising. It is seven o five in the morning. That is the perfect time for pickle flavored soda. It's not, oh wow, it? that is like it's really. Very, oh, oh, it is oh, like, that is like obscene. Very dilly. dilly. I don't even know now. I was excited. Oh, I was, it does not smell good at all. I was all. excited and now I'm not. It's like sticking your face in a bush of dill. It is. It's like. That sounded weird. It's it's Ooh. overwhelming. Are you ready? Okay, I guess. Do you take a picture? Yeah. All right, let's do this. Uh, I. It's th- not. It's bizarre. <laughs> oh. Oh, there's like a weird. Yeah, there's something really there's weird like a about weird it. Bernie aftertaste, almost. It is very dilly. Sometimes something smells like something, but like, then it doesn't really taste like no. it. It tastes like if this was like a sweet, a little bit dill. sweeter. <laughs> Not good. The aftertaste, it like the dill doesn't. I would rather drink pickle juice than dill, this. <laughs> the dill doesn't really get you when you're drinking it, but it's, it's the, the after. aftertaste. Yeah, it's not very sweet. Oh, oh, no, oh. that's not good at all. Oh. I'm giving that like a negative two. <laughs> Ugh. Even Kurt does Oh, I wish you could see Kurt's face. Right I'm going to I'm going to give it a 1 because wow, it, that's it, bad. It, it does taste like pickle like they say. It tastes more like dill. Like, it just tastes I like wish dill. there was more pickle like yeah. like you said if they put straight up pickle juice in there it might be okay. This could be good in like a mixed drink maybe. But, yeah, this is just straight up dill flavor. Ugh. I don't even get pickle. I just Blah. get yeah, I'm that's not it, good. I'm giving it a one. Negative two. I'm Ugh. sticking with my negative two. I'll finish it, though. I ain't that way. Uh, I love the... Uh, it's a really weird off-putting color, too. Yeah. Like, I don't <laughs> know. Something really strange <laughs> about that. So thank you, Stephanie Taylor and Addison. Uh, really? And do we thank you? We have <laughs> more know. We have more things from them. Okay, and good. And I, I did see other sodas. <sighs> so... Okay. Oh, the taste yeah, won't that's leave bad. your mouth, either. Ugh. Holy buckets. Do we have any? What time are we looking at? Twenty-two minutes. Oh, we're we're that, and that's with the around. unedited portion, so we're ahead of. Schedule. We still have an envelope from Matthew Thornton, but I believe yeah. we're going to open that next episode. This is a big episode because this so, is we want to yeah. get everything squeezed in this one, mm-hmm. and it's funny because every time we announce a listener stories episode. I start, we're like, ooh, we're not well, going to get enough. No, I start looking for Reddit stories that I yeah. can throw in for if, Just we, in case. if we don't have enough. And even like the first week, we got a couple, but not a lot. Then all of a sudden, one day, and then I finally managed to get back into my my stories, string session <laughs> yeah. stories, and I had like six, and oh, they're nice. waiting. Dang. We have six voicemails. I think Oof. I think all in all, we have 13 stories. I'm so excited. And six voicemails. Wow, that's a lot. So we... We're wondering if we're even going to get through all these, but oh, I think we, we should. We it might be a lengthy episode. We honestly have no idea how long this is going to go. Is there anything else that we got to say before we start recording? I don't think so. I don't think so. We've either. been recording this whole time. I mean, Just before we start talking, <laughs> before we oh, start be talking about the, oh, I didn't hit record, guys. About the episode, I worry. I always that's always a fear of mine is that we'll do a really good episode one and day, it'll be and totally, we'll look and it won't yeah. even have recorded it, and it's like oh. that. We've had when I was recording with Jeff and Joe, we had a couple of situations where we recorded a whole episode about the Blair Witch. Or the Bell Witch, actually, yeah, and it was thing. corrupted. Like it, we, it was a throwaway. We couldn't even use it. And then yeah. I think there was something else that we recorded, and the audio was just crap. Oh, quit 
drinking it. I got no. I'm if Blah. I have something in front of me, a, a beverage, I have to finish it. Hmm, if it's me. like gross candies, I can push them away. But if it's like a soda, I have to finish the bottle. It's just a weird thing with me. Not and it's me. not getting any better the farther down I get in the bottle. No, either. I imagine it's not. Ugh. Am I doing the? F- no, you are doing the first story, so that's oh, good. Okay. So again, thank you guys for all these stories. Getting you guys glasses. sent in some amazing yeah, stories. I'm excited. This is always uh, one of my favorite episodes of the Stranger season. Michelle in Arizona sent me one this morning, but she said if we wait, she'll clean it up and make it a little better. Even though I thought it was great, okay. but I said to do that because I feel better if we have a couple stories on tap for next time because we always worry we're not going to have enough. Yeah, totally. And this time that was not a problem. Like, this time. No, you guys came through, so thank you guys so much. It was nice not really having to research anything for this yeah. episode, but then I did a... <laughs> I say, si- yeah, like I have any idea what you're our talking about. Our side sessions is a researched oh, one, but it's just kind of a cool history I one. I keep hitting my microphone, so if you people you hear that, sorry. Um, so, yeah, I have no idea what the side session is. I'll, I'll be excited to hear that. It's just... I, I, came, I think it's a damn interesting site. Like, there's so many cool articles on there. Uh, it, like this is something that I've never heard about, and I just think it's kind of fascinating. So we'll do that for the next side sessions. Cool. So I think that is it for our pre-show warm-up. <laughs> oh, my stomach is just going, and this, oh, yeah. this pickled soda ain't gonna help. There's something really unsettling for me about having the email in front of me and not having Audacity up. It's I find it very comforting <laughs> to be able to see that it's recording. And oh, watch are you going to tell them about uh, oh, un- uh, speaking right. of unsettling? Okay, well, I'll make this. Well, really this is quick. your story. This is your listener yeah. Here's story. my listener story. It's probably nothing, but um, Jim, it's a, it's a demon. Stop it. Jim is out of town this weekend, and so when he's gone at night, I'm just a little uneasy. Even though I have a dog and a security system, whatever, I'm still a little uneasy. <laughs> so I had two lamps turned on in the living room and the kitchen light on because <laughs> I don't like getting up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and looking into the living room and seeing pitch darkness. I like to be able to see what's in the living room. I'm the it's exact just Lucy opposite. laying there. Oh, really? I've, I've had, I had a Glade plug-in in my living room that would light up. For some reason, it was like one of the newer ones that lights up like so you light. know it's working. Oh, okay. And I have my door to the bedroom halfway closed. I had to get up in the middle of the night and go take it out because if there is any light in my apartment. Yeah, same way. I, I can't. My room is pitch black. Like everything has to be pitch wow. black. To I me, just my room on. has to be dark. I, I just don't like not being able to see out into the living room i like confirming that nobody's standing and, there. and seeing like in the, seeing a shape move that would be room. horrifying <laughs> um anyway so i got nothing happened overnight of course um i got up this morning i even locked the bedroom door <laughs> wow. but i got up this morning and one of the lamps in the living room was off and i thought it is an old lamp it's from my great aunt's cottage on the bay but um i've never had an issue with it and Kurt even said, well, maybe the power went out. We had a, a storm that came night. through last night, but nothing, there was no other indication that the power went out. Um, and I walked over thinking, oh, the light bulb just burned out and I had to turn it back on. Like I had to turn the little knob to turn it back on. So That's I thought so, that was kind of odd. That is, it's like something turned, something had to turn that knob. There's probably a totally natural explanation <laughs> yeah, for demons. it. demons. Stop it. <laughs> but then I came down here and I feel like this I feel like this probably happened last week last time we were recording, but like the power strip was on the floor. I, I just think that's odd. Like I normally if something like that falls, I pick it up. I don't like I don't just leave stuff if it falls on the floor. So it was that just power really, strip was on the floor. It was on the floor this morning when because I got it was, down here. It was where it is. Last week, last when Aaron and I were here, that's where it was because I was looking at it. But I wonder if at the end of the episode when I was unplugging things, it fell to the floor yeah, and I didn't we notice. We would have still known because that's we would have heard I think. it. That's what I think. That's what I think. I don't know. It's weird. This is That's the second time I've like come down here and something's been on the floor. But I mean, grant those sticky things aren't very sticky. Yeah. So that explains that. But yeah. I don't know. Huh. Just weird. Keep keep an eye out. For I don't get weird happen. vibes in my house. No. I don't hear stuff like, but it's just weird. I don't know. That's because I come back out here sometimes with a Ouija board right outside <laughs> your house and I try to get stuff amped up in here. Well, good. <laughs> Glad to know that's happening. The lamp thing is weird. It I'm is a little sorry. weird. I'm, I'm sure there's an explanation, but it's probably if, if you had to physically turn the switch. I fully expected when I was turning it that it wouldn't turn on. So when it turned on, I was like, wait a minute. It's the same exact lamp as yeah. this. So I don't know. 
Weird. Okay, let's get to the first story. This is from Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. Thank and it's you. funny, as I was re- I read through these yesterday, and as I was reading it, I was thinking exactly what she said I was going to be thinking, which is funny. <laughs> okay, listener story submission. Maybe it was just a nightmare. At the time, that's what I decided it must have been, just a terrible dream. It felt very real, though, and even now, almost 20 years later, I still remember it vividly. I was in my mid-20s, asleep in my bed in my apartment next to my boyfriend of that time. I was lying on my left side, facing the window, my back to my boyfriend. In the middle of the night, I awoke from deep sleep with a jolt of sheer icy terror. I felt two arms slide around me, sliding over my arms, pinning them against my body. My ar- the arms felt rigid, harder than they should have been, and they squeezed around me. I felt the torso of a body press against my back, and it squeezed hard enough to restrict me from moving. I looked at the arm, and in the low light from the window, I could see the light coloring an obvious shape of the bones of a forearm. I gasped and started to struggle against the body. It vanished the moment my boyfriend reached out and tried to put his arms around me. In my struggle to regain reality, and with the sudden release of the pressure from the skeleton man, I thrashed away from my boyfriend's hand. Did he wake me from a nightmare, or did he scare off some sort of Grim Reaper-esque paranormal villain? This is typically typically the part of the story where Krista and I would both say classic sleep paralysis, <laughs> and I think it's as good of an explanation as nightmare, but what if it wasn't a construct of my mind? Love you guys. Stay strange. It's so creepy. It does have all the hallmarks of sleep paralysis. It does, but I feel like now anything weird that happens at night can be brushed off as sleep, as sleep paralysis. paralysis. Yeah. I think the part that actually feels the most like sleep paralysis is when I'm in the middle of a an episode of sleep paralysis, it literally just takes the lightest touch from Jim to wake me up. To snap you out of it. Yes. And so that's the part that actually makes me think it's sleep paralysis, but... Who am I to say that? I, I mean, maybe something was visiting her and her sleep. the skeleton man is creepy. Yeah, that is creepy. But I've, I've actually come across a lot of stories lately about people who it, at night say they feel like the pressure of someone sit down on the bed and then put their arms around them when there's nobody else there. So, you know what's weird? I actually had a dream similar to that last night that's just like hitting me right now. That is weird. Like somebody was forcibly putting their arms around me and like... That's really strange. Okay. Especially considering the, l- the lamp, I did read this yesterday. Situation. Okay. So, maybe so this was in I your think mind. it maybe it was just stuck in my mind. That's just creepy. Weird. It could be sleep paralysis. It, I just don't want to start brushing no, every single thing. No, everything is off not sleep paralysis. sleep paralysis. So, and thank I, you so much, Stephanie. I for also that. think sleep paralysis can be accompanied by or a conduit for paranormal activity. So, I don't, I don't ever want to just brush something off as sleep paralysis without admitting that there's still a chance that it could be paranormal because yeah. i don't know yeah i just know my own experience with sleep paralysis See, so i've never had it you don't want no it. i don't want it i have it's enough not fun i have enough stuff i don't want sleep paralysis on top <laughs> yeah, you of that. don't need anything on top <laughs> of that i don't need anything else cool thank you so much stephanie for yes, sending thanks, that stephanie. in now we're gonna play a voicemail chris has got to put the flash drive in did you ever see the meme where it's somebody putting oh, in yeah. a flash drive <laughs> yeah. and it's like wrong, yep. Yep. right? Or wrong, yeah. wrong, and then you put it in the same way again and it's right. Yeah. I'm like, yep, that's 100%. Like, that's like what, what else always happens to I me. I just is, tried that and it didn't work and now it works. What else always happens to me is the meme where somebody can't remember their password. So they try about 10 times and then they finally go to change it. And then they would go to change it. It says your new password cannot be the same as your old you password. Just, yes. <laughs> yeah, oh no. my gosh. You probably just had like one thing slightly off though. Yep. Okay, who am I playing first? Blaine. Blaine, okay. And bef- uh, he says, Kurt, I submitted a story to you, but completely forgot a detail if you wouldn't mind adding this when you record. The one I'm talking about and her friends, the one I'm talking about, her and her friends claim that she was a psychic and had the abilities to talk to and see spirits. Okay. So this is from Blaine. Hey, Kurt and Krista, it's Blaine calling. Um, I heard you guys are looking for a ghost story. So this is one of my experiences. While I was leading one of the groups in the Sheboygan Asylum, we had a person volunteer to do the Estes method down in the morgue. And it turns out that it was more than what we had bargained for. As when we were doing it, we asked how many people are here, how many spirits were there. And we kept getting these numbers. At first, we got three, and then it changed to 11. And then she just yelled, stop. 
So we asked more questions, and then she would say an answer, and then we would stop. It was very direct, very, very responsive until the very end where she just yelled, turn around, and she spun. And I said, whoa, we need to stop. So we pulled her out, and then as soon as we took the headphones off of her and we asked her to, to look at us and respond to us, um, she just gave us the most blank stare ever. Like she was like the lights were on, but nobody was home. Um, definitely one of the scariest things. We immediately got her outside, and we had to call the first half early because we just didn't know, but we had to reassure everybody that there is nothing negative at the asylum. It's just sometimes you get more than what you bargained for. So that's definitely one of the scariest things that I've ever experienced. Um, love you guys. Love the show. And I want to know what your reaction to this is. Maybe maybe you can put some of your own experience to this. I, I just don't know. Thanks. Bye. Oh, so this is Blaine. This who, is Blaine. Okay. Yes, Blaine you told me is, about Blaine. Yeah, Hi, Blaine. We got we to hook up with him and have him come on here. That would be amazing. Uh, Chris, you've been to the Sheboygan I have. Asylum. I, I wonder if he was there when I did my tour. Uh, he very easily could have been. Hmm. I didn't go on that one because, you know, it was at night. I love but, this. And here I am over here. Oh, I totally want to do the Estes method. And then I hear something like that. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I don't want to be like I, a... I don't know what my fear is of the Estes method. I think it's just the idea of being closed off to external stimuli. I don't know if that... Do you think there's some correlation between using a Ouija board and doing the Estes method? You are deciding you're going to be the conduit for this Yeah, but this also, I mean, how is that any different from EVP where you're asking something to manifest that's to true. leave you know like that's the same thing but there's something about i just don't know what it is there's something about the estes method that creeps me out shutting i mean closing off all of your other sensory um outlets i guess is i think that would be disorienting and a little unnerving yeah like you're in a haunted location in the dark i i feel like if i'm gonna do it i need someone sitting next to me to the point where i can feel that they're there but if the person who has their senses off is like literally responding to the questions that the that's that's crazy. To then me. that's crazy that yeah they if they can't hear any you know, of the questions what you're asking it's just yeah. By the way, I've seen people attempt this on some of the shows I watch, and they can hear what the people are saying. Oh, one hundred. I'm like, you're doing this completely wrong. The whole point is to not hear the questions yeah. that are being asked. Yeah. So, but I mean, you have to. I think you have to like really take care to have like noise, really good noise canceling, noise canceling headphones yeah. to have something in your eyes yep so i mean it's it's easy i still want to wanna do it it's easy to fake you know what i mean like yeah. you can have all this stuff on your head and you'll still be able to see in here i still would love to pay the money to do our own investigation at the asylum the tour was fun but to me it wasn't an investigation like i want to go in just, with my you know, equipment and have control over the environment and be yeah, able like to coleman do like coleman wanted us to yeah. all do that but and he, you know like coleman would come i want blaine to be totally. there blaine that knows, would be amazing blaine yeah. knows the area he's a resident he's a investigator resident. There. you know as far as we don't have any experience with I've never anything done the like Estes method. that yeah uh and it's weird because if, when aaron if you or listen to the last episode when aaron and i were at that pub my mind keeps going back to that moment when he said, all of a sudden, I had this evil look on my face. Oh, yeah, that's weird. And it's so weird to me because I was sitting there and I don't, it's like, did something just for like a moment, like, take me over? It's you, just weird because it, it freaks me out because. You know Aaron what I thought like of, pretty, though? Huh? You have a tendency when you're listening to something, someone, you make that face. <laughs> <laughs> you just make, you make this like face where you're like really angry. thinking about it. And you kind of look angry or confused yeah. even. And I wonder if you just were distracted and were kind of half listening to Aaron and made like a weird face. It's possible. I hope that's what it was. But, and I need, we've never had somebody get like taken over on oh, one of God, our investigations. No. You know. Uh, that idea is just so terrifying to me. yeah but we've never had that um you know that first one at elsings where barry and i got sick and had to go sit out on mm -hmm. the you know that was kind that was of an overwhelming closest. experience that was yeah. an overwhelming experience uh, well anyway thank you blaine yes thank you blaine <laughs> we got to get blaine on here because i, I want to talk to awesome. him about this stuff. yeah and i've i've i started listening to one of his episodes and i just i haven't gotten back to it but i love the quality yeah. he has a really good yep. podcast what's the name of his podcast Give him a show uh right. ghosts I feel like we should get this right. Yes, we should. <laughs> Ghosts and us? 
but he's a fellow Wisconsinite. He is. And I think they regularly do events at the Glen Beulah School as well that we drove by when we yeah. were attempting to go to the cemetery. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's right. We got to go back to Glen Beulah sometime. When they're not doing heavy construction on the road there. Yeah. I'm, I'll put his podcast. Uh, I'll put an episode of his podcast into the strangers Sweet. so people can listen to it if they yeah. want. That sounds good. Yeah, it does. All right. Cool. Our next story, thank you so much, Blaine. We're yeah, going to get you Blaine. on here maybe this season and maybe next season, but I would love to have you come on here. You know, we didn't want to do like interview episodes. He can be a co-host. But I still want to pick his brain about some yeah, of this totally. stuff. Because I'd I'm, love to I'm hear about his experiences, yes, so would I. especially this, at the asylum. This next one is from Kayla. Love Hi, you, Kayla. Kayla. Um, it says, hey, Kurt and Krista. I've been playing catch up and was just listening to the season six, episode 20 listener stories episode when I heard you mention, uh, I always never sure if I pronounce this right, Reiki? Reiki? I think, yeah, I don't know. I, I'll be with, I'm with you on that. Is it Reiki? Is it Reiki? I'm not sure. I think sure. it's Reiki. I think it's Reiki. I'm going to say Reiki, Reiki because Reiki makes it sound stinky. So I'm going to say Reiki. Reiki, which <laughs> reminded me Reiki. of my own story. It's a longer one and it reminded me of another story. So feel free to break them up or whatever. A few springs ago, things were not going well in life in virtually any aspect, and I decided I needed needed a bit of a reset, so I splurged and bought a facial and Reiki, Reiki package <laughs> from the local wellness center. Shout out to the refinery in New Holstein. What up, refinery in New Holstein? <laughs> I had heard about their Reiki, Reiki sessions from the yoga classes I was taking there as the yogi was doing her licensing for Reiki at the time and decided to give it a shot at re- and decided to give it a shot at rebalancing my chakras. I don't know how I feel about that stuff. Like I talk to people who have done that and it's like been amazing for them. Reiki? You know, as far as like <laughs> realigning your, your chakras yeah. and stuff like that. I I, I will admit I'm I'm somewhere on the fence of do I believe in it. Yeah, I am too, 100%. Do, I don't know. I, I showed, love the idea. I showed up, talked with the person doing my session, had my facial, and then moved on to the Reiki portion. I was lying on the massage table, eyes closed, covered with a blanket, and had crystals placed to match my chakras along with white quartz, which I actually have in my pocket right now, Ooh. positioned to help move the flow of energy. As she began doing her thing, I started to sense a presence in the room that felt unfamiliar. I could hear where my Reiki person was, but this presence felt like they were following them around me. It felt older and female, not really grandmotherly, but not malevolent in any way. Once it was done, I couldn't sense the spirit anymore, and the person announced that they were leaving the room and to take as much time as I needed to deal with whatever may come to me before leaving the room myself. The second that's the door- so weird. It is like, hey, I just messed you up. Good luck with that. <laughs> well, I don't think. They- I mean, I realize that's not the intention, but, it's, but- it's, it's weird that like that the person, whatever she sensed, was following the person around that was performing. Yeah, you know, to me, that's weird. The second the door clicked shut, I began bawling my eyes out. Ooh. It felt like everything I'd been holding in was finally set free, and it was exhausting but relieving at the same time. Hmm. A good 15 minutes-ish later, I went out to pay for my services, and I asked the person, you don't have to answer this, and maybe I'm crazy. Was there someone or something else in the room with us? Hmm. She just smiled and said, before I answer that, tell me what you felt. I described it. And That's she, a yes. <laughs> yeah. I described it, and she confirmed that, yes, her spirit guide, who takes the form of an older woman, had joined us during my session. This led me down a whole different path, and I started asking all sorts of questions, one of which was, what do you see when you're doing this? Do you see energy flowing? Do you see chakras? She said it varied from person to person. I pressed on and asked what she saw during mine, sensing that she was beating around the bush a little bit. She gave me a sad little chuckle and said she didn't want me to freak out, that it was symbolic and to consider it fully rather than taking it at face value. But she had seen, quote, a form, something like the Grim Reaper, scythe and all. But they were surrounded by butterflies, many of which were monarchs. That's like a cool image. Yeah. We talked a bit. Very contradictory. Yeah. We talked a bit more and I left pondering what this all meant. Monarch butterflies have been like a weird synchronicity. Synchronicity. Aaron brought it up in the last episode. Yeah. Yeah. We have, so we have milkweed on our front steps and uh there's three monarch caterpillars living on it right now. Those are going to turn into butterflies Mm -hmm. soon. There's milkweed everywhere around here. Is there? So we have a lot of monarchs. Good. Because I don't want monarchs to die out. I like monarchs. No. 
Within a few weeks, I felt more in control of my life and had been thinking about this frequently. I had started spending more time outside and was noticing butterflies, monarchs, even more and more frequently. I never had a year where I saw so many butterflies without being in a butterfly exhibit. Looking back on things now, I've decided that, yes, the Grim Reaper did mean death, but not a literal death of a being, mm. rather the death of my first marriage. Things hadn't been going well, and I wasn't feeling like I was being true to myself. We got divorced, and I began finding my way back to who I was meant to be. And in parentheses, metamorphosis of butterflies, anyone? Hmm. Things are going infinitely better now. I'm remarried to a man that doesn't question me or call me crazy when I want to talk about the paranormal. And I'm a stepmom to two amazing girls who embrace the strange right along with us. That's awesome. And her second story... Growing up, I was always afraid of monsters in the dark, as most kids are, but this continued well on into middle school, high school, and even today, I still sleep with my Himalayan salt rock lamp on for some type of lighting. We were just talking about That's that. such a nice soft glow, too. Yeah. I used to have a bedroom upstairs, but when my mom announced in sixth grade that I was going to have a little sister, some BS back then, I thought, I was an only <laughs> child and liked it that way. Now I wouldn't trade either of my sisters for anything. So my options were to either have the crib in my room with me or move down to the basement, which was finished. Obviously, I moved to the basement. My dad took down his big train table that was in our laundry room slash hobby room. I had one real wall to the north. The west was a big sheet of felt stapled to a board of wood. Same thing with the wall to the south. The east was left open to the furnace and a little closet that housed the winter heater, to which the door was almost always shut. We hung up a thick wooden dowel with some zip ties to the rafters to make a closet of sorts. And she puts in parentheses, I swear this room didn't feel as depressing as it sounds. I had rope lights all over the ceiling, so it was a fun, chill vibe for a teenager in the early aughts zero zeros now that i've set the scene for you there were multiple nights when i would wake up and look to the closet where the water heater was and see something looking back at me with glowing red eyes from the open closet door that's a big nope yeah no i've consistently remembered it with a head shaped a bit like anubis like that isn't that the dog shaped <laughs> the egyptian <laughs> like i need to google it. like google that i think that's the that's the egyptian it's an egyptian god i think that's the dog the one that has the head of a dog okay i would pull the covers up over my head and wait until i thought it had gone away and then grab the flashlight i frequently stole off my dad's desk before bedtime flicked it on and shined it at the water closet door it was always shut i have no idea what it truly was it never made a sound it just watched i can picture it clearly and it has never changed from how i remembered it Anyway, those are my two stories. Now I live in a house that's supposedly haunted. I hear footsteps upstairs when I'm on the main level and I'm the only one home. I can hear a dog padding around, but all three of ours are laying at my feet or within view. I have two of them by me at all times when I'm home, and a third one will sit guard outside of whatever room I'm in. They just do this naturally. My grandparents always said I had a way with dogs. Supposedly a spirit pushed my husband's ex-wife down the stairs. <laughs> in parentheses. I would too, though. Just saying. <laughs> I'm going to high-five that spirit if it ever shows itself to me. Oh, stop. Occasionally, things uh. will go missing and turn up days or weeks later in random areas that make no sense. They haven't messed with me beyond that, and I tell them as long as they're not hurting the humans or dogs that live here, they're allowed to come and go as they please. Good grief was that ever a Midwestern goodbye. I'm so sorry. You two are truly amazing, wonderful beings, and I'm so grateful to have had your presence grace my life. Thank you for all that you do. Take care and watch for deer. <laughs> Blessed be Kayla Burhop. Wow. So thank you so much, Kayla. Yeah. Love you and hope you're doing okay. That's creepy. Like the, the eyes, the eyes yeah. looking out of the closet I mean, and then you turn on the light and... It's literally the stuff of nightmares and, it's and closed, horror movies. So I don't know. That's I just, think we've all had that closet too. Like as a kid, I had a big closet and I was always very... Um, deliberate of making sure the little latch <laughs> was and i remember one night waking up and hearing the doors moving and my cat had gotten stuck in there and it was like but what's funny to i was me about is to die even with my green guy looking around the door frame at me when i was a kid and all that i've never really had closet stuff mm. there's like closets were never a thing for me for me it was very specific to my childhood home but it's like i i i'm her whole story about the Reiki mm -hmm. thing is really interesting to me that that she, the lady that did it knew that she had a spirit guide with her that's a older female and the Grim Reaper with the butterflies is like a perfect 
you know, analogy of breaking free mm-hmm. from who, like the death of one stage of your life and going into another. So I just think that's really cool. It reminds me of the death card in the tarot. Yeah. Which it doesn't people see it you're and die. think, oh my God. I mean, yeah. you're not supposed to walk away from that idea, but the whole, it, it is about the death of something that yep. you no longer have a need for in your life and you need yeah. to make room for something new. Cool. Thank you so much for sending that in. Yeah. Kayla. And now you, I'm gonna Is have a, I'm gonna have a swig of this refreshing soda yeah, pop. Yeah. By the way, um, carbonation makes me burp. Kurt wouldn't know what that's like, but nope. let's just say it's coming up tasting like Dylan. I'm not happy. It was funny because Krista stopped a recording before to put Blaine's voicemail in, and then she burped, and then she Hackling. just she just started laughing. About <laughs> like, how, oh my god, this is, it it's, like it's worse Dill. coming back up. Blech. That's just not good. It's that's not, just not good. It is not good. Okay, next story. Hey, Kurt and Krista. Started listening at the beginning of summer and just got to the beginning of season six. Dang. Dang. Wow. Thanks for binging binging. (laughs) Absolutely love the podcast. And as many have said, listening feels like spending time with good friends. Thank you. Love that. You have helped me overcome anxiety. That was a parting gift from COVID by coming on walks with me and focusing my mind on other things. You guys regularly join me when I am planning and marking for school. And I always look forward to the next episode. Aww. I told myself I would message you when I caught up, but just listen to the doppelganger episode and made me think of something that happens now and again. Oh, I remember reading this yesterday. I mean, <laughs> totally creeped out. Every so often, I would wake up as I'd hear my son walking towards our bedroom in the night. When I look, I'd see him walk up to the side of the bed and just stand there looking at me as young children are yes. known to do. Yep. I don't have them, but I've heard enough stories about this. I would try to ask what he wanted or get up to take him back to his room and he would vanish. This used to happen a lot a few years ago, but occurs three to four times a year now. I am now able to recognize faster it's not my son and I tell it to go away. I don't believe this is sleep paralysis as I can move, sit up and get out of bed to take him back to his room. Also, for the past four months, I've had lots of synchronicities. I've been seen four minutes past the hour a lot, but specifically 11.04, which in the UK is how I write my birthday, 11th April. To add to this, in the past month, I've been seeing my initials and lots of registration in parentheses or in license license plates. Yes. I'm going with the idea that this is a sign something good is coming. Anyway, just wanted to share. Stay strange, Katie. Um, Your son having a doppelganger is so creepy. creepy. (laughs) Like what... Like what is that? What is it trying to it, do? It, is like that maybe, is so is the creepy. Sun maybe astral projecting while he's maybe. sleeping. I mean, that's Ooh, a that possibility. didn't even cross my mind. Yeah. Maybe he's just wanting to visit mom in his sleep, and there's like an actual physical manis- manifestation. I like. I feel like. Do you? The people that have sleep paralysis, do they realize that they're having sleep paralysis when they see something weird? No. So for me, initially, no. But then at some point. I do realize when I start. So there's this point, and it's funny. My coworker Eric also I discovered has sleep paralysis, and he's like, "Yeah, I start making this noise." And I'm like, "Oh my god, so do I." It's like the weirdest thing. When I start making that noise, like I'm trying to call out because I'm scared. That's when I realize that I'm in sleep yeah. paralysis, that's and I'm so trying creepy. to get Jim that's to so wake me up. To me. Yeah, yeah. So I I don't know if it's true for everybody, but yes, at some point. After it's been going on for a little bit, I understand what's happening. But when you initially are seeing something that's not there or hearing or feeling something that's not there, it feels very real. That's creepy. It and I love creepy. the synchronicity stuff. Me too. I think that's so that's so interesting. Yes, and I'm going like, to take it as a sign that something good is yes, coming. I'm taking Katie. it as a sign that something good is coming too. There's actually a cool uh, voicemail coming later, I think from Tanner. About, okay. Okay. Uh, synchronicity and i just love the synchronicity stuff i do too i, I just don't they don't they we've done happened. an episode on synchronicities yes. haven't we they, they uh, I feel like we could haven't do been happening one. for me this past week or so but i'd like to think that maybe we're making it happen to other people by talking about it so often mm. i don't know could be it's uh it's fascinating. Like, Who that's is one it the... that always says, hey, uh, you, I've started rewatching watching um, Hellier, or hey, you're watching Hellier, have the synchronicity started up again. Yeah. So yeah. I, I do think you it can be influenced by what's happening around too. you. I think it can, too. Thank you so much for sending that, Katie. Yeah, thank you, Katie. So now we got a voicemail from, he is not a stranger to the podcast. It is our good friend, Coleman. Coleman's, we love you, Coleman. We love you, Coleman. We got to have him on here. We got to have Blaine on here. Aaron wants to come back. Corey's got to be on Corey will probably be the season finale. Oh, yeah, as always. We're talking about the 
potential Christmas episode. Alleged Christmas <laughs> Alleged episode. Christmas. Uh, Brittany wants to come on. Brittany's on. Wow, we got to squeeze a lot of people in. Yeah, we do. We're already in we'll July here. All come in at once. Actually, when... it's almost August. I know. It's I crazy. Know. This season's going fast. There's it still is. a couple episodes that I want to do that I'm hoping we have time to get to. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I was just drifting off there. <laughs> <laughs> thinking of all the ones that I have written down at home. So this uh, voicemail is from oh. Coleman. We love you, Coleman. Thank you for sending this. Here is Coleman. Hi, Kurt and Krista. This is your uh, stranger Coleman from Central Wisconsin calling for the uh, uh, listener stories episode. Uh, I'm on my way to work, so if you hear some background noise, I apologize. But uh I had something strange happen. I don't know if it's paranormal, but it was definitely strange and creepy. Um, I'm a member of our local volunteer fire department, and, uh, you know, one of my assigned duties is to clean the fire station. Um, I'm a night owl on the weekend, so I'm up usually late. So I started cleaning really late uh, this last Saturday night, and I was up there until about 1.30 in the morning, Sunday morning, and I was cleaning, getting done. And I came out and was shutting all the lights off. And upstairs, we have our dispatch area and meeting room. And, you know, it was eerily quiet. And all of a sudden, the door just opened on its own. I could hear it opening on its own, creaking open on its own. Um, And it's weird because there's no, like, air conditioning or vents up there that would push the door open. Um, And there was no other doors open, like a cross breeze. But uh, the door just slowly creaked, creaked open, and I could totally hear it above me. Um, and it just it really creeped me out. I'm not going to lie. The hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I got out of there as quick as I could. But the whole night when I was cleaning up the station, uh, I always felt like I was being watched, like there was somebody in there watching me. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but it just felt eerie and creepy, and I just got a bad vibe. Um I've done, I've been up there by myself, you know, many times cleaning and cleaning up the station and I always feel like I'm being watched, but, um, I don't, I don't know what it could be. I could be just imagining it, but I, it, it, with the door opening up, creeping open like that, it really freaked me out. So I just wanted to call and let you hear that story and, uh, you guys keep up the great work and, uh, take care and stay strange. Oh, he's so Wisconsin, and he's I so love Wisconsin. it. He's so Wisconsin. It's it's so nice hearing that accent. Hearing our own accent. Yeah, Coleman, thank you so much for the story. Yeah, there that's is creepy. Nothing more disconcerting to me than being like the only one somewhere and hearing a door and creep, feeling like you're not alone. And feeling like you're not alone. Yeah. Uh, that's a feeling I don't get a lot. Like no. the feeling like somebody's there. But the, the only place I'm ever really truly by myself is in this house, and yeah. I don't want to feel that here. No. I haven't. No. I'm not one who's in a building by myself very often. I am sometimes at school and stuff yeah. like that. Um, I just think of the energy that's in a, a location like that, and you think of the yeah. men and women who volunteer their time at a place like that. Yeah. They're really dedicated. Yeah. So I could see if, uh, you know, it could be a former firefighter that 100%. dedicated you their know, life like, to actually, it. We actually talked about that this week at summer school that, you know, like it's no secret that I love my kids. Mm-hmm. And like part of me wonders if I died. You're going to linger at the I school? If I would not stay there, like refuse to not be there for them. Right. And yeah. I could see that happening. I could totally at, see that. I could that. see that happening at Coleman's location. Yeah. You know, and I don't think it's a bad whatever is there. You know, I don't it's think just it's just uneasy. It's, it's uneasy, but I don't think whatever's there is bad. I love that he um, went through all the rationalizations too. Yeah. Like, there's yep. no windows open. There's no no wind could have done it. Like, yeah. I like to hear people kind of like working through it a little bit Instead to rule other jumping, stuff out. Jumping to oh my god, it's, it's a ghost. haunting. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. Thank yeah. you so much, Coleman. Keep us Creepy. updated on that place. Yeah. We gotta get. Coleman should we do here. an investigation there? Just we gotta saying. get. We gotta get Coleman here. <laughs> yeah, we should. Uh, we keep. We've been saying that for like seven seasons. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, thank you so much, Coleman. That was awesome. I love that he sends one every time we do. Yep, a I do stories. too. Thank you, Coleman. Our next one. I might stumble over some of this. Looking at these words, I think. I believe it's UK. You ready? I'm ready. Hi, Kurt and Krista. Me again. Disclaimer. 
I know the history of Kefalonia because I'm obsessed with Greek islands, because Captain Corellis Mandolin is one of my favorite books slash films, and because I have a degree in history mainly focused on military history and witchcraft, bizarrely. So I think that's cool. Okay. I think that's a cool combination. Yeah. So yes, I know you could argue the toss with me that it's my fertile imagination, yada, yada, yada. But I also live in a haunted house and I've had a fair few unexplained weird things happen to me during my life. So why not a time slip? To set the scene, we stay in a gorgeous hotel on the Fenari Road near the lighthouse. And every lunchtime, we walk to a little taverna overlooking the bay, watching the ferries and cruise ships, etc. This particular day was post-COVID and our final day. So we were feeling particularly grateful and happy slash sad as whoever wants to go home. We'd been to the war memorial a few days earlier and paid our respects parentheses, history nerd tradition, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't on my mind at all. I was tucking into a Greek salad, big ice cold mythos. I don't know what that is. Ice cold mythos. Is that? I know what a a, Greek salad is. What's a mythos? Sounds like some kind of beverage. Maybe. It's probably not pickled soda, but uh, I'm going to have to look that up. When a large truck went past with several young lads on the back, except all of a sudden they weren't young lads, and then in parentheses, modern clothes, earbuds, sunglasses, etc. They were World War II era Italian soldiers, and the truck wasn't red anymore. It was army colored. I looked at my husband and said, did you see that? And he went, the truck? Yeah, weird how it went a bit gray and chilly for a moment. It hadn't gone gray and chilly for me. It was 35 degrees and sunny through the whole thing. I know what I saw. He knows what he felt. And we have no explanation for that at all. So she saw something and he yeah, felt, felt it instead? Something. Oh, yeah, like, like, uh, and then she right. it was weird and left me with a lingering feeling of sadness for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. Hope you enjoy, Shelly. Thank you so much, Shelly. Wow. But it's weird that she saw the truck go from young, like modern teens or whatever, earbuds and all that. And all of a sudden it became a different colored truck with older Italian yeah. soldiers in it. And he didn't see it, but he felt something. And he said, "It." he said, weird how it went a bit gray and chilly for a moment. Like, hmm. you know, so that's weird. Like the that's, weather changed Yeah, that's almost? like almost like, like she visually saw the time slip and yeah. he felt the time yeah. slip Ooh. so i think that's, that's interesting really, that is super interesting uh yeah i don't know what to make of that i don't i would uh, feel so out of sorts after something like that i would like, too like the idea of a time slip actually freaks me yeah. out because it's like what if you can't get back right you know <laughs> so although if it's back to the 70s i'd be content staying there <laughs> right uh but yeah, I don't know how to explain that, but I love the fact that she saw it and he felt mm-hmm. it. So I think that's super, super yeah, it's really interesting. Cool. So awesome. Thank you so much for sending that, Shelly. Also, I'd like to take a vacation in the Greek islands as <laughs> well. Yeah. Like I would like to visit Greece that. Greece is a bucket yeah, list for me. I would like to time. visit that part of the country too. Um, I feel like I was going to bring something up and I don't remember what it was. Hmm. I was just thinking a little while ago, remember to save this, remember to save this, remember to save mm-hmm. this. And, and it's gone. And now it's gone. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what I was going to say. But time slips are so fascinating mm-hmm. to me. Like, Same. Like I feel, I don't know. I mean, it's no, it's no secret that I feel like time has gotten really wonky in mm-hmm. the last 10, 15 years or so. We got the Mandela effects going on. Mm-hmm. We have all this other stuff. Like I feel... Like something has the changed. The new one is, did Richard Simmons wear a headband? Oh, I, yeah, that was posted in our... <laughs> I would have sworn he did. I I'm don't guessing, remember. I'm guessing he did sometimes and didn't other times. You know what I mean? That's possible. Uh, but I don't remember. I don't know if I remember him wearing a headband. I That's what I picture. You know, and the other one was Ed McMahon handing out yeah, large checks. Yeah, we talked about that one. Yeah, we did talk about that one. Uh, nothing, I, told, I totally remember him handing out Nothing checks. will beat the fruit of the loom cornucopia that does not exist to me it's the jiffy peanut butter <laughs> energy Krista and her jiffy peanut butter um am i reading next you are reading the next okay one. what do we got here hi Kurt and krista i just wanted to share a quick spooky experience i had when i was younger i moved into the house i live in now in 1998 when i was a kid it's always had some spooky vibes to it but as far as i know nothing out of the ordinary has ever happened there we were the second owners and the first owners just moved away to grow their family As a kid, I always had a hard time sleeping in my room, and most nights I fell asleep in my parents' room. This night, I was sitting on my parents' bed with my mom next to me and my dad standing by the door to the hallway right next to the light switch. 
All the lights in the house were off and it was about 10 p.m. I don't really remember what we were talking about, but it wasn't important to a 10-year-old anyway. What I do remember is seeing the very clear silhouette of a man, about six feet tall, same height as my dad, start walking towards me from the hallway. I knew it wasn't my dad because he was standing in the same spot, and I immediately started to freak out, telling my dad someone was in the house, turn on the lights. The shadow started to crawl up onto the bed (laughs) and was headed towards me. Oh, my God. I was on the far side of the bed, and it was a lot closer to my mom than to me, but didn't bother with anyone else in the room. My dad was confused, and it seemed like it took him forever to flip the switch, but he finally did. When he did, the shadow disappeared. It was like nothing was there. To this day, I still think about it because my parents sold me the house, and now that bedroom is my room with my bed in the same position. My parents swear they never saw anything, but every time my husband has to leave for a work trip, I sleep with a light on in the living room. That's weird. Hey! That's a synchronicity. (laughs) And my TV on because I can't shake the feeling of being watched, and I just don't trust the darkness in my house anymore. Krista feels that. Girl, I feel you. (laughs) For me, it's more about I just want anyone lurking outside to think that we're home and awake. I have lots of other stories, especially from my husband, because his parents would build houses on vacant lots. One of his favorites to share is the house built on land that used to be orange groves where they found the body of a little boy, and my husband swears that the spirit would play with my husband's toys, mess up the sheets of a freshly made bed, and that my husband heard the boy shivering in their next door neighbor's chicken coop, which was right up against the fence. That's creepy. That is creepy and also a little sad. My mother-in-law lives in another home they built that has a creek running through the front yard where multiple people who have never spoken before see a cowboy dressed in all white standing. My brother-in-law also swears he's seen a UFO. And when I was living in that house, I heard someone whistling at 3 a.m. on a rainy night outside my window. Whistling? No. Whistling creeps me out. Whistling stuff creeps me out. Even though the property is gated and the house sits at the furthest corner from the street, that's creepy we also had a mysterious light shine into a room and fly off when it noticed us again at 3 a.m if you want me to go into more detail about any of these stories i can send more emails yes please do uh thanks for reading your podcast is one of the only ones i still listen to and i think it's partly because you guys are so engaged with your listeners and genuinely interested in what we have to say and share stay strange leah thank you so much wow the creep factor (laughs) thank you so much like a 10 yeah thank you uh that's more stuff on the bed like anything climbing up onto a bed. crawling up onto the yeah. bed and with both of her parents there like yeah. that's really unsettling yeah. like whatever it was knew her parents couldn't it, see it yeah oh that's really creepy yeah that's and the whistling outside the window the, i don't know what it is the the whistling stuff creeps <sighs> me out yeah um yeah i Agreed. always think of that youtube video where that guy said that when he was a kid he would constantly hear this like tune being whistled and i think i talked about this in a a previous podcast that when he was a kid he used to hear this certain tune it's almost like if you watched walking dead it's like how negan whistles like negan's groups whistle okay um and then there's a video on youtube where he was the fourth of july went somewhere next to this lake and he was filming the fireworks And you can hear, like, there's someone out on a boat, and you can hear them whistling this whistle. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah, and some people think it's a creepypasta, that it's not real. Could be. But other people swear that it's real. But anything with a Mm. whistler freaks me out. Like, whistling, there's something about whistling that freaks me. You know, add that to my... It's creepy. Add that to my weird fear of phone, like, (laughs) empty phone lines. But there's something about whistling that's really creepy to me. Because it's such a, it should be such a benign thing, but there's something really, like, creepy and mental menacing about it if it's happening where it shouldn't be or when yeah. it shouldn't be yeah yeah like outside your window especially it's like like a child's um nursery rhyme is really creepy if you hear it in the wrong place yeah. at the wrong time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. very true so thank you so much for sending that yeah next thank one you. we have a voicemail from jess okay. this one i had to stitch together there were two separate i i tr- you're gonna hear an obvious edit but i stitched them together to make them one sound clip so here is the voicemail from jess hi krista and kurt and strangers this is jess baron yazdani calling from um the discussion group on facebook 
I am a longtime listener, and I really love your podcast. It was the first podcast I've ever listened to, and it's gotten me through a lot of difficult times lately. So I really appreciate everything you guys are doing. I wanted to call in. Um, I have possibly two stories for you, neither of which are actually my stories. They are my parents and then my grandmother's. So I'll start with my parents. And my mom has told this story so many times that she's tired of telling it now. So I know it pretty well. Um, so they uh, had just moved into a house in the country. It's in a little town. So they did have neighbors close by. Um, and they were sitting in the backyard looking out towards the field behind their house. And it's a field um, with just tall grass. It didn't have any trees at the time. And beside it, right at the end of their um, yard, is a pumping station. So that's a hill with an artesian well inside of it. And around the pumping station, there was a page wire fence. And that night, they were sitting outside. It was in the summer. And my mom remembers that there were northern lights out that night. And that's why they were sitting outside. And so um, they looked out across the field and they saw what looked like a woman wearing a white nightgown walking across the field heading towards the pumping station. And what they thought was really unusual was that she was walking without any trouble, whereas the field is very bumpy and has little, you know, holes and whatever in it. And um, but she didn't seem to have any trouble walking through the field. And she got to the pumping station fence and she just kind of went through it. And so my parents looked at each other and my dad, they kind of said, you know, did you see that? And my dad went around, um, there's a, a driveway into the pumping station, sort of a few houses down from my parents. And he walked down there to see if a woman had come out on the other side and there wasn't anybody there. My parents still live in that same house, but you can't see into the field anymore because there's too many d trees. So um, they haven't seen anything since then, and I never saw anything when we were growing up. So I can't say for sure that that there isn't something, but um, they definitely saw something. I'll just finish with my last story. Um, that's my grandmother's story. And this probably happened in the 1960s because at the time my mom was still a teenager. Um, and my grandmother was in surgery. And um, at some point, she had been bleeding out a lot, and she um, basically died during the operation. And she said that she remembers that floating above her body and f looking down at her body on the table and feeling sorry for her body, and she could hear everything the doctors and nurses were saying around her trying to, to get her back. And she looked up and saw a light. And in the light, she saw her mother and some of her other relatives all happened to be female for some reason. And they were beckoning her to come towards the light and towards them. And suddenly she heard a voice in her head that said, do you have any reason to go back? And in that moment, she thought of my mom, who was still a teenager, and she was instantly back in her body. And after um, she recovered, she did speak to the doctors and nurses, and she did confirm what happened, but what she saw and what she heard during that time, um, she did confirm with them. So um, it gave everybody kind of a lot of peace um, just with her experience. And so those are my two stories. I do have lots of others. So next time I'll call in with um, maybe one or two more. So thanks, guys. Wow. Love those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Near-death experiences are so yeah. fascinating to I me. I love the, the, the uh, 
exactly. Again, obviously in a white nightgown, yeah. like ghosts. It's usually a lady are, in white. <laughs> but like the 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 whole thing with like that they were having no issues walking yeah. across the field when they should have. It's very like, telling. That's yeah. And then and the walking, walking through, through the, the fence, fence. That's super telling. My first in- instinct is I wonder if it's just residual. Like it was somebody it who be. would frequently make that trip yeah. to the gas station, but why would they do it in a nightgown? I don't know. But I would think they'd see it more than that one time if it were residual because yeah. the residual is something that sort of plays over and over again but hmm, creepy that is creepy uh maybe it's good that they can't see into that field yeah, anymore exactly <laughs> like if i saw something like that i would want to go back the next night at the same time yeah. and see if i could see that again yeah the near-death stuff is so fascinating yeah to me. totally but you know like one one question i have about that is why sometimes do you have a choice like say yeah. I'm say mm-hmm. I'm skateboarding down the sidewalk as I always do and yeah, I fall you're into real I fall into a wood chipper. Okay. There's obviously no do you want to stay? High probability of this happening. Well, I know, but there's obviously right? no. Do, would you like to stay behind because you're in pieces? You're not gonna. Yeah, I'd say no. You know, like you're not gonna be able to. Stay They're not behind. gonna stitch you back together. But so where? What is the deciding factor? Maybe that's if, it. If, when like if your body. You know, like, Could survive do it? we have like predetermined times that we are supposed to die? But something Final can happen. Yeah, something can happen before that where you get where you weren't supposed to die, where you kind of so have you an get option. A choice? You get a choice. Mm. It's like, why sometimes do people get a choice to not go to the light when other times, yeah. like I said, me and the wood chipper, you'd have no choice because you're not coming back from that. Right. You know, so mm. I don't know. It's, it's, I never thought about that. Yeah, it's weird why sometimes you have... And the experiences are all often very similar, but you're right. Sometimes you have a choice and sometimes you don't. Yeah, don't but then there's, al- there's always... Maybe it's because we listen to some creepy stories where someone in your family is beckoning you to come and it's not really them. Like something Ooh. about the family beckoning you to come to them freaks me out. Yeah, because you know? there and there are stories where they want to go. They want to go to the light. Yeah. And whoever they're seeing is like, no, you're you're not yeah. done here. I'm sending it, yeah, you back. And there are stories where they want to go to the light, you know, yeah. but then they get pulled back because it's not their time. Hmm. So I know we did an episode about near-death experiences, and I think we kind of like just brushed them off as brain, like stuff going on in your, your brain at the moment are of death. Still but there's firing. just there's yeah. so much there that that I don't know. You I know. saw something online the other day that your brain, after you've been declared like dead, up to 30 minutes, your brain can still be um, registering things that are happening. And they, the whole thing was like, is it possible that you're dead and you're actually aware that you're dead and you're hearing people declare you dead for like up to 30 minutes? That is like the most horrifying thing I've read recently. That is. I was like, <laughs> no, I just want to be dead. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be aware that I'm dying or that I've already died. It is horrifying. Ugh. Dang. Dying. I don't know. Near death experience stuff is weird. It is. You know, we fascinating. That might be one that maybe we need to have a episode that's just stories about people mm-hmm. with near death experiences. Yeah. Because I don't I don't know. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube about that. There is. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. That's fascinating. Thank you so much for sending that, yeah, Jess. Thank that's you. awesome. Our next story. Hey Kurt and Krista, here's a story from when I will I just got a Big old aftertaste of dill. I'm going to finish this. <laughs> Sometimes it'll just hit you like a brick wall. Mm. Oh. oh, That sounds super oh, enjoyable. That bottom was really oh, dilly. dilly. Dilly, dilly. Oh, God. Not in a good way? No, not in a good way. Wash that dill down with some, some cold coffee. coffee. Some cold coffee. <laughs> oh, gross. Mm. I'd rather drink cold coffee. Um, Hey, Kurt and Krista, here's a story from when I was a kid. I don't remember if you guys use names or not, but I'd like to remain anonymous. We we always default to anonymous and first names only. No problem, Xavier. We got you on this one. That's not really his name. I just picked Xavier. I don't know why I picked Xavier. (laughs) Between the ages of 11 and 17, I lived in a house where there was a lot of activity. There are many stories from myself, my brothers, and my father, but I will share just one today. This house was in a quiet suburb outside Sacramento. My parents bought it from a man whose wife had recently passed away from cancer. She did not die in the house. It would also end up our family dog would die of cancer. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. His health deteriorated very quickly after we moved in, and I can't help but think now that it had something to do with the house. Not long after moving in, I felt very uncomfortable. After school every day, I watched my two brothers for an hour while my dad drove home from work. That hour was always terrible. I would count all the knives in the house to make sure none were missing. 
I would sit on the stairs where I could see most of downstairs and all of upstairs. I just always felt like someone was in the house. That's so creepy. It went on with only the heavy feeling for a while, and then things slowly progressed. I will talk about the first major experience I had there. School was out for the summer, and I was watching my brothers, 9 and 7 at the time. There were a lot of kids in this neighborhood our age, so they and their friends were in and out throughout the day. I was watching TV downstairs, and they were both upstairs playing. I went to the garage to let the dog in from the dog run. I came back in and returned to the couch. I start to hear running upstairs and loud shifting of the Legos. My brothers had this huge bin of Legos they play with. I hear more running, and I yell out to them to stop running. It's quiet for a couple seconds, and then I hear more loud shifting of the Legos, and I start to get annoyed. Then more running. I yell again to stop as I get up and go upstairs. As I'm going up, I can already see that they're not in the room with the Legos or in my brother's room. So I go straight into my parents' room, and they are not there. I start to freak out a little bit and go to my room, and they aren't there. No one was upstairs. I immediately ran outside. Dang. There's no way they could have hidden and gone downstairs without me seeing them while I was on the couch or while I was looking around upstairs, which is why I reacted immediately. When I get outside, I look all the way down the street, which ends in a court, and I can see them playing with some other kids. I go down there and ask them why they didn't tell me they were leaving. They said they didn't see me on the couch or anywhere downstairs. So they had left the house while I was in the garage. I realized everything I was hearing was not them. I didn't go back into the house until my dad got home. After this incident, the activity increased in frequency. Someone at my dad's work, knowing he had a preteen teen daughter, suggested that maybe we were experiencing a poltergeist since I guess they affect that aged girl more. That aged girl more. Sometimes I drive by that house and wonder if whatever it was is still there. I also found out recently that the previous owners didn't even move far away. They moved to a different house in the same neighborhood, which adds a bit more creep to it, I think. Hmm. Thank you, guys. The Lego stuff is creepy to me because we had, you know, my old apartment, we had experience with Legos Legos. where the Legos kept popping up when we didn't have any Legos at the apartment. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, It's so weird when you hear like the running upstairs and then like somebody going through the Lego bin and then you realize later that there was nobody up there. It doesn't feel like poltergeist activity to me. Why? I feel like that that feels like a spirit, like a a child. Not mom. We don't know. We don't know if that's a child or not. No. I just feel like poltergeist activity is more. Um, but do you think would a ghost have the ability to interact with the Legos and like swirl the Legos so. around in the bin? Yeah. What opened that door at the firehouse? That's true. <laughs> that's true. But it's it's like the hearing like the footsteps upstairs when nobody's there always yeah that's creepy that always then you go out there and look around and there's nobody there like you're so certain someone's up there you're yelling at them to stop yeah i don't know i'm I'm curious to hear what other stuff happened at that house now Mm -hmm. so please send us another story for next next season's listener stories because if that was the first one i want to hear what else totally went on there maybe there's more to it that would i'd like to to think that whatever was there did not affect the dog the dog's health you know yeah like like, i hope not right but it's just so creepy when you like hearing it upstairs and then realizing you're brothers were down the block the whole yeah. time so yeah that's so creepy very unsettling so thank you for sending that in yeah but i, I was gonna say maybe more st- hearing more of what happened in that house will lend to the idea of a poltergeist yeah to me it just felt like a residual energy or a spirit although residual energy wouldn't respond to you like he told him to knock it off and then it got quiet but to I me like that's residual whatever energy wouldn't play with the legos no exactly yeah. it's not residual to me it feels like a intelligent haunting, haunting. yeah yeah I think poltergeist. I'm curious to hear what else happened in that house. Me too. I really am. Thank you so much for sending that. Krista's next. With oh, next me? Story. Okay. Let me see. You're the only Krista down here. Get my glasses. I think. That we know of. That we know of. <laughs> hey, Kurt and Krista. I'm a longtime listener, and this is my second time writing in. I saw your call to action for listener stories, so here you go. In my mid-20s, I went to Playa del Carmen, Mexico, with my friend, and my mom and my mom's best friend. At the time, I had recently watched a Destination Truth episode on the Alouche. Alouche thank you. Um, the Mayans believed it's bothers it's a bothersome spirit that makes trouble and causes problems. If you look around the Cancun area, especially, you can see tiny little houses, huts slash huts, built on the side of the highways. Those are houses for the Alouche. 
I miss Destination Truth. <laughs> Although I'm loving Expedition Unknown, I just miss Destination Truth had so much more of a paranormal spin on it. Anyway, why did you Josh ask Gates, me the other day? We love why you. did you message me the other day and ask if we talked about the secret, the book, the secret, the podcast? Uh, oh, the, the so treasure one of hunt. our listeners was asking oh. on Instagram. They're like, "Hey, if you haven't covered this, there's a place in Milwaukee where they may have buried treasure. It has to do with." And I was like, "Oh, we totally did an episode on yeah, that." Yeah, we and talked I sent about it to Corey because Corey and I went down to the yeah. park and kind of figured where we think it's buried. But I sent her a link to that. Okay, episode. cool. While we were at our resort, we had an appointment with one of the resort's excursion specialists. He seemed very nice, and so I asked about the Alouche. His eyes got wide, and he said, quote, We don't talk about that. They won't come out here, though. Weird answer, right? Yeah. We were there for a week, and every night something weird happened to our room or my mom and her friend's room. One night, our light turned on by itself in the middle of the night. There was a remote control that turned on the light, but it was on the bedside table, so we didn't accidentally roll over um, it in our sleep. Another night, my mom's sibling... Sl- sliding glass patio sliding door. thank you i don't know why i said <laughs> sibling <laughs> another night my mom's sliding glass patio door was opened she said they locked it before they went to sleep but she woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom she thought she saw something outside and went to go look out the door but found it wide open instead blah <laughs> that's a nope for krista oh it's a big nope she woke her friend up you to see You know how freaked it. out you would be if you got up like last night and like the, the front door was open. I would open. die. Like would you search I the would house? die. What would you do? I don't know what I would do. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he's back tonight, right? Uh, no, he's probably coming back tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do all sorts of fun stuff tonight. <laughs> yeah, right. It's going to be so far past your bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Get ready to get scared at three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry. She woke her friend up to see if maybe she had opened it, but her friend said she didn't open the door. Another night, my friend and I could hear what sounded like someone throwing metal poles on the ground and on top of each other. Think metal fence posts. I'm thinking like tent yeah, poles, tent posts. you know? Yep. We thought maybe it was construction work, but it wouldn't make sense given the time of night and we didn't see construction. I think the Alouche did come to the resort and decide to play some tricks on us while we were there. I love your podcast, and I think both of you guys are great. Oh. Krista, I believe in Bigfoot, too. Kurt, I'm loving your recent on-location <laughs> stories, but by far my favorite episodes y'all are done. Y'all have done our Missing 411 and the Smiley Face Murders. Cool. Would y'all consider doing an episode on Stardust Ranch in Arizona or the Mirrored Men? Keep up the great work. Love from Texas, Amanda. I know we've talked about the Mirrored that Men. That sounded familiar to we me. We have talked about the Mirrored Men. I don't remember what episodes, but I think they came up like a couple times in our episodes. Why do I feel like it was part of the, when we were talking about creepy forests? Would that make sense? It might have been a story that was in there, but I know we talked about the Mirrored Men at some point. Yeah, that and I don't familiar. remember. Uh, Stardust Ranch in Arizona, I've never heard of. So no, I'm going to look that up. Is that like a um, Skinwalker Ranch type Our of? next episode is going to be listener suggestions, where I have two stories that were Ooh. suggested to me by listeners. So Sweet. I might put this one in as the third because I know nothing about the Stardust Ranch in Arizona. Okay. Uh, I love that people love the Smiley Face Murders yeah. one because I wasn't really sure about doing that. Because yeah. No, it was good. It was a lot. It's um, interesting. Missing 411. I don't remember what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Missing who, what, what? Missing what now? Uh, I, if you, do you ever go to the Reddit, the subreddit for Missing 411? Here's it's the just thing. like such. I cannot find my way around Reddit to okay. save my life. It's just, it's, it's nothing but like David Politis haters. I think it's... I don't know where to go or how. I've, whenever I have Reddit's a topic. Reddit's like a, Reddit's a rabbit hole. Like, you know? well, I feel like you have to find the area first, though. I can never find the area I'm looking for. Like, I will go to Reddit and search a topic and I get nothing that I'm looking for. Sophie and I constantly I just send don't think Reddit I know links how to, to do each it. other because somebody will ask in ask reddit the subreddit or something what's the scariest paranormal thing you've ever encountered and then thousands of people will respond and that's where i get a lot of these stories from gotcha. and there's there's posts that are nothing but links to all these ask reddit paranormal like one oh. so that's where i'm getting all these stories from well i'm, gonna, I'm just terrible at reddit <laughs> But that's like that thing where you start on it and then you'll spend hours. Just Eight reading. hours later, you're like, "What day yeah, is like it?" Yeah, there, there's a bunch of hellier subreddits where you can Ooh. read stuff. Yeah, so I'll get you. They get... they are releasing their new project called um, Untethered. No, the Unbinding. It's I thought they were going to release another season of Hellier, yeah. but it's a whole new thing called I think it's called the Unbinding. I'll have to check. That it's out. only going to be released in like. I think select theaters to start with, but hopefully they do like a release yeah, on Prime like they, they did will. with Hellier. I'm sure they will. 
I'll I'm so out. amped to see whatever it is. Amanda, thank you for sending that stuff in. Yes. The aloof stuff is creepy where Aloosh. they actually build houses. That's a cool word. They build houses for them. So So they stay in the houses so and like leave everyone alone. Let, yeah. I love that concept actually. That's so cool. Here, thank you, you just, Amanda. You just for stay in that. there. Yep. Just stay this there. is your Don't little house. Us. You just stay in there. Next we have a voicemail from listener Michaela. Oh, Michaela. She's a frequent flyer on the Strangers. She's page. a frequent flyer. Hey, strangers. Um, my name is Michaela from Massachusetts. Uh, I have a story that I wanted to share. Um, quick shout out to my best friend, Stephanie, who introduced me to this podcast. Um, but I've always loved things, all things paranormal and cryptid. So I have kind of a two part story. I'm not really sure if they're connected. I'll let you be the judge. Um, one of our kind of family legends is that my grandmother would have dreams that were premonitions. Um, sometimes this was kind of comical, like when I was living with them one summer and I got in a little fender bender and I drove home and I was upset. I went into my room. My grandmother came into the room. She asked me what happened and I told her and she just goes, Oh, I had a dream this would happen. I have to go tell your grandfather and stormed out of the room and left me there by myself, um, kind of wondering what was happening. And then another time, uh, her premonition dream was um, kind of a, a more sad thing when she had a dream. In the dream, she was pregnant. She was the one that was pregnant um, and then had a miscarriage in her dream. And a little girl came to her in the dream and told her, tell mommy and daddy that I'm okay and that Ian's on his way. At the time, however, I had two aunts that were pregnant. And so my grandmother actually didn't say anything to either of them because she, she wasn't sure, you know, which one it was going to be. Um, and then my, my aunt Paula sadly um, lost their baby um, but within a year, they were pregnant again with a boy, and they ended up naming him Ian. So we've always wondered if that kind of gift is is passed down at all. Um, I don't know that I've really had too many experiences that I could say I thought was a premonition. Um, but I have one kind of weird instance that still kind of haunts me to this day. Um, I was kind of in my mid twenties, uh, living in Savannah, Georgia, um, was out at a bar with my friends and this group of Navy guys came in to the bar and started talking with us. Um, they told us that they were, uh, blue angel pilots which I knew there was an air show the next day. Um, and I, I kind of laughed at them. I was like, you're not Blue Angel pilots. Like, you wouldn't be out drinking the night before an air show. Um, and they, they're like, no, no, we're um, just part of the maintenance crew for the Blue Angels. And so we were, like, just hanging out with them all night. Um, I got a little tipsy. And as we were leaving, I say to them, bye, don't crash any planes tomorrow. Um, yeah, you can, yeah, I, unfortunately that actually happened in 2007. Uh, I think it was in South Carolina outside Savannah. Um, a Blue Angel pilot crashed at the end of an air show. Um, his name was Lieutenant Commander Kevin Davis. And to this day, I still am just so just confused about that whole situation. Like I actually said, don't crash any planes tomorrow. And then a plane crashed. And I have a couple theories. One is that maybe I do have a little bit of that gift from my grandmother. And the alcohol kind of loosened it up. Um, another theory that I thought of recently was that I was in the bar Bay Street Blues in Savannah, Georgia. Which is supposed to be haunted. So maybe there was some spirit connecting. Um, then my, the, you know, the third theory is that. It was just pure coincidence um, and a biggest, <laughs> the biggest time of ever sticking one's foot in one's mouth. Um, and to this day, I do kind of wonder what those maintenance guys, if they, if they ever still think of that comment. Because 
when I said it to them, their face just dropped. You know, that's just something you don't say. Um, and so that, that still kind of haunts me to this day. Um, so I don't know if, if it's connected. What do you think? Thanks, guys. Love the podcast. Stay strange. Oof. Yeah. That's like, tough. I don't know. The, I don't the, the know either. Angel one is, like, I would feel, I know myself well enough to know I would feel super yeah. guilty. Like, I caused that. Yeah. By it feels saying like it could have easily been a coincidence, but also that's going to stay with her forever. It would stay with me forever. Yeah. So um, I, I, I totally get that. That's weird. That's, so I, don't I will know say thing. we have something here in Wisconsin called, I don't know if they do it elsewhere too, but it's called the E, it's EAA, right? Yeah. And it's an air show that happens every yes. year and every year a plane crashes. Yeah. Like it's just like the odd, the odds of a plane crashing when you have so many planes coming in and out of, out of this like show, it, it's just going to happen and it happens every year. So I don't know, but how, these guys are like elite yeah. Blue Angels are elite, so it's probably much more rare for one of them to have some kind of an accident. It's, so I don't like, know. I would have thought that they would have laughed off her saying that, but she said they look shocked. Like maybe that is that a bad luck yeah, thing maybe. to say? So wonder I wonder if they do think about that. Yeah, maybe. You I know? hope not. I hope for not. For her too. sake and their sake, I hope yeah, not. I just know how I would feel if yeah, that was me. Totally. So Michaela You'd be I'm, second guessing that yeah, your whole life. I'm sorry you have to go through that because yeah. I feel like I would be so guilt ridden yeah. about that. But her grandma's premonitions, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's powerful. Yep. Especially that is. the whole miscarriage, but there's another baby on the way. Like that's crazy. That is. That was a good that was I would a good not s- want that gift. No. You you'd know things that are going to happen to people, and you don't want to say it because you know. I'd be content with seeing auras. Yeah, I don't want to. Not the see... kind I get before a migraine. <laughs> I, I don't want to see, like, what's going to happen to right. people. That's a that would be quite the burden. It would be. I love that the the opening story was her grandma's like, ah, dang it, I knew this. I gotta go tell your grandfather. <laughs> yeah. Like, yep. like this is just a Tuesday in their house, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but Crazy. no, that was awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you for sharing those stories. Um, next. Hi, Kurt. Hi, Krista. I'm a big fan from Hungary. Oh. What's up, Hungary? Wow. I'm a big fan from Hungary, and this is my second story I'm sending you. My English is not perfect, but I try to do my best. In parentheses. Kurt, please help me out. I got you. I got (laughs) you back. I was seven years old when we moved to a new house that we built. Previously, an elderly couple lived there, and they died within a few weeks of each other. The old house was demolished, and ours was constructed. I was happy because I got my own room upstairs. The Hungarian countryside was beautiful, and in the 1980s, just like the kids in the Stranger Things show, we explored the surrounding woods on BMX bikes and played Atari slash Commodore video games. It was a perfect childhood. That was my childhood, 100%. Mm -hmm. Riding our bikes and playing the Atari 2600. Like, Stranger Things nails that. Totally. That, what it was like Mm -hmm. to be that age in the 80s. One night, I woke up to the sound of someone walking in my room. <laughs> okay, nope. Took a, took a dark turn that. there. Yeah, one night, I woke up to the sound of someone walking in my room. The carpet made a distinctive noise when stepped on. I had a skylight without curtains, so nothing could have caused that sound. The footsteps were slow, and I heard them about once every minute. I was so scared that I didn't dare to move. Ooh, that's that... creepy. It's almost like something's walking around not wanting them to hear. Yeah, I like stopping oh. and then starting again. At that time, I didn't tell anyone about it. In the following years, this happened more and more frequently. At first, it was only once every two or three months, but by the time I turned 11 or 12, I heard them three times a week. I usually woke up around two or three in the morning to the noises. I always turned to face the wall and listened as something slowly walked around my room and then left. I see Krista shaking her head out of my peripheral vision here. That's the worst. If I dared to look, I could see by the moonlight that the room was empty. Sometimes I was so terrified that I felt cold from the adrenaline. Eventually, I told my parents everything. Nobody believed me, and they even planned to take me to a psychiatrist. My parents are fantastic, but they never believed in ghosts. So I told them I no longer heard anything. But then, of course, it happened again. Later on, I started to fear when the sun went down because I knew it might come again. After a while, I couldn't bear it any longer, and I asked my younger brother if I could sleep in his room, which was next door, as he had two beds. He agreed. On the last night, as usual, I woke up after midnight. I didn't hear footsteps, so I looked around. 
The door was open and there was a figure standing there. I could only see its outline. No details, but it was filled with a greenish color. That almost sounds like what I saw Mm -hmm. when I was a kid. That's what I just thought of. I could see through it. At first, I thought I was just imagining it. So I looked away out the window, rubbed my eyes, and took a few deep breaths. When I was sure I was seeing clearly and awake, I looked back at the door. It was still there. It was a little more than five feet tall with short legs and long arms. That's creepy. (laughs) The whole silhouette reminded me of a gorilla or a shirt or sh- or a short person carrying a bag on its back. Its arms reached down to its knees and it hardly had a neck. It still glowed with that greenish color and I could see through it. I did what anyone else would have done. I started screaming and closed my eyes. The lights turned on and my father rushed to help me. I told him I just had a bad dream and asked for a glass of water. Interestingly, I never heard or saw anything again. Sometimes I felt a strange presence, but when that happened, I closed my eyes and focused on making it go away, and it did. But these occurrences became rare, and by the time I turned 13, they stopped completely. To this day, we still have the house, and I love it. My parents and my family are great. Sometimes I bring up the incident in conversation, but neither my brother nor my parents ever experienced anything. P.S. In college, one of my friends studying cultural anthropology Anthrop- hmm. Speaking of stuttering. <laughs> <laughs> One of my friends studying cultural anthropology once mentioned that the description matches a kind of mythical figure known in European legends who carries a bag and collects souls in it. <laughs> I didn't dare to research that any further. I do not blame you. Yeah. Could it be that the spirits of the elderly couple stayed in the house and I heard them for years and then this strange creature with a bag on its back took their souls? <laughs> That's so creepy. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a creepy idea. It is. Or was this all my imagination? Thank you. Thank you for... That is it. Thank you for reading this. You guys are the best. I love the show. Peter. Thank oh, you Peter. so Thank much, you. Peter. I imagine it would be incredibly isolating to be a child experiencing something terrifying nobody believes you and they they actually want to send you to a psychiatrist psychiatrist. so now you have to pretend it's not happening yeah and just experience it alone that's like so sad the creepiest idea to me is that the the couple it was the couple old couple and this thing finally came to carry their souls away (sighs) that is like yeah that is like a frightening movie to be made the chills a little bit that is like frightening i don't Mm. know it's, it's, so was that thing creeping around his room all I don't that know. time looking for souls? I don't like, know. Ugh. I don't know. <laughs> horrifying. Yeah, that one. That one That's is horrifying. terrifying. Peter, much love to you. For I'm dealing, glad you're still living for, there and you're yeah for dealing okay. with that because that's yeah. that's bizarre and scary. Yeah, absolutely. That, this is this is one of those things I'll be thinking of when I'm laying in bed wide awake at three o'clock in the morning. That's creepy, Peter. Thank you for sharing that with yeah. us. Sending our thank love you. to Hungary. I sleep with a white noise machine on, so I can't hear stuff at night. <laughs> Good. <laughs> That's smart thinking. Uh, Next story is Krista's. Okay. Silence. Um, okay. Oh, need my glasses. Hey, y'all. We have another y'all. I love it. Love the podcast and our little cozy spot in the social media internet world. Again, I'm amazed at like how... We've never really had an issue in our group with with never no like, like drama. it's just such a good it's like the perfect group of I know. people. Every once in a while, you'll get somebody who will not read the room right and yeah, yeah. and but they are quick. They're gone quickly. Yeah, like they I think they figure out very quickly that we don't put up with anything, yeah. and then they just exit. Yeah, which I it's love. It's just a solid group. Of it really amazing is. People, they are amazing. I love how you guys have made it feel like. A family. No, that's you guys. You guys. Yeah, you guys are the ones that made this feel like a family. It's just Krista and I babbling about stuff and mispronouncing (laughs) words. Right. You guys are the ones that did this. Uh, It's definitely my safe space. I love that. Thank you. My name is Corey. I'm a female, by the way. I've lived all over the South my whole life. I'm currently residing in my favorite little small town in Alabama with my husband and our boxer, Evie. I think we have a lot of people from Alabama who listen. I feel like there were just some posts on the strangers about Alabama. Fun facts about where I live. Our county is made up of about seven small towns. So when people ask where you are from, you either reply with the largest town name or just the name of the county. Hank Williams Jr. used to live just up the road from my in-laws and even wrote about one of the little country stores that's in town in one of his songs. That's That's really cool. cool. We have lots of German influence here. Why does that surprise me? 
and still celebrate Oktoberfest every year. We have a huge German population oh here in There's Wisconsin. <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. There. We also have one of the most beautiful shrines I've ever seen in my life. Look up Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament when you get a chance. It's crazy to think that that beautiful place is nestled down in the back, nestled down the back roads in the woods not far from my house. Yes, Kurt, your mic is still on. I'm always wondering if a poltergeist is going <laughs> to shut it off now that I know your place is majorly haunted. <laughs> With demons, apparently. <laughs> demons. We could get Zach Baggins down here. Oh, please, no. I'd rather have demons in my house than <laughs> Zach Baggins. So on to my story. This occurrence... Ha- I take that back. I don't want demons in my house. This occurrence happened in a different small town in Alabama in about 2004-ish. We had just bought a new house and were in the process of moving in. I was 10 years old at the time. We were taking trips from the truck to the house with boxes and furniture. My parents had both gone in, so I was alone outside grabbing another box. It was getting late and starting to get dark outside. The streetlights had turned on and the crickets and frogs had begun their nightly songs. On my way in with a box, I was about halfway to the front steps when all of a sudden I heard really loud breathing <laughs> in my ear from behind. Krista's been there. She feel like that I feeling. know what you're talking about. I could feel the breath of whatever was on my neck and the breathing sounded, for lack of a better word, nefarious. 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 I turned around and screamed when I realized there was nothing behind me. I didn't feel it. Thank did you goodness. did you feel like the breathing was nefarious when you yes. had that in your ear at LC Secondhand Shop? Like it was evil. Like it, it was it wanted to scare you. Yes. I felt like whatever it was was like, yeah, I'm here. I'm going to let you know that, that I'm so here Wisconsin. right now. Yeah. 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 I'm here. Oh, yeah. I'm like here oh, now. Oh, sorry. Just passing through. <laughs> oh, sorry. I scared you. No, whatever it was wanted to scare me and let me know it was there. I, I, That's how I, I felt. I would love so badly to get back into Elsing so Secondhand Shop. Sadly, it's not Elsing it Secondhand yeah, Shop anymore. anymore. Okay. I turned around and screamed when I realized there was nothing behind me. I dropped the box I was carrying, ran and bolted up the steps through the door, still screaming into my mom's arms. She told me I looked like I had seen a ghost. All the color had drained out of my face. I told my parents what had happened, and my dad went outside to investigate. He found nothing. They chalked it up to being some type of animal, but I know it wasn't an animal because nothing was there. I don't think I left the house for three days after that. It would not go outside alone in the dark for a long while. It still haunts me to this day to be outside at dusk by myself. I'm always checking over my shoulder to make sure nothing is breathing behind my back. Oh, that is so creepy. The end. (laughs) Thanks for listening to my short, terrifying story. I still really want to know what it was, but it's one of those mysteries I'll probably never solve. Keep up the great work, Corey. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Corey. There's nothing worse Super than somebody creepy. saying, oh, it was probably just an animal. When yeah. you know dang well that it was something breathing, right. like right behind like you. Like you felt the breath. Yeah. That, to me, is really creepy. Yeah. Ugh. I don't... I... I just associate you with the breathing and the air thing from <laughs> Elsings because you that freaked you out so much. Yeah, but it, if I had felt the breath, that would have taken it to a whole new level. You I probably only heard bolted it. out of there. Oh my god, or died instantly. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to make it. Like animals do make some weird sounds, but, you but I don't feel think an it. animal could be like twenty feet away from you, and then right. you're gonna. It's gonna sound like it's, it's breathing not a bird. Right, like right in your ear. Yeah, like what I you know. I'm with yeah. That was not an animal. No, that's really creepy. That's a creepy story. Totally. You know, it always makes me think of uh, what the heck is it called? Like the glimmer man. Like something's there, but you can't see it. You know, because it's cloaked or whatever, and it's right behind you. And, yeah. Yeah, Corey. Thank you for sending that. That was super creepy. <laughs> Next up, we have Stephanie's voicemail. Okay. Stephanie from Texas, who bought us the Missing 411 books Ooh. that I'm currently reading right now when I'm laying on my couch. Because I can't watch TV because the air conditioner is on and I'm really fussy about hearing oh. the TV. when they, So I'm reading the, through the Missing 411. We got to do another Missing 411 Yeah, episode. we do. So this is from Stephanie. Hey, Kurt and Krista. It's Kurt's friend, Stephanie, from Austin, Texas, with a quick little story about a spooky thing that happened to me earlier this year. I do special effects makeup for film, TV, what have you here in Texas, and I was on a night shoot for a horror movie back toward the end of April. We were out on a remote ranch movie studio lot filming in a cabin, and it had already been a bit of an intense day because we were filming as fast as we could to finish before a storm rolled in, ended up working right through the storm, then well into the evening, early morning. The cabin was at least a mile or two from the main studio entrance, off a dirt road in the woods and next to a body of water. 
Not sure if it's a stream, lake, or river, but definitely had moving water vibes. The biggest crashy part of the storm had already moved through. It was well dark and fairly late at night, and those of us not inside on set were waiting on the porch outside. The cabin was on stilts with a mostly covered porch along most of the exterior, the front entrance stair facing the stream into the woods. The only lights were inside the cabin, but shut off from those of us outside, and any incidental headlights, etc., that we were losing to go through our equipment between takes were mostly isolated or off. I was sitting, standing with my kit and supplies outside, maybe 15 to 20 minutes uh, into the calm after a big storm, and mostly dark and mostly quiet on that porch, and I heard crying, screaming like a high-pitched wailing off over the water into the woods. It was only a couple times in, in maybe five second bursts, which didn't seem to be a call and response or anything, but definitely made me think of all those stories of crying in the woods potentially being used as a lure to snatch the unsuspecting. I didn't hear much after that. No one else on set mentioned it or seemed to notice, and I went on with the work at the shoot. I always intended to look up foxes or similar animal cries when I got home to see what it might have been, but... All things considered, I'm also okay with it being a spooky little set story from one of my first feature film shoots. And that's it. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to the next episode with listener stories. Love you both. Take care. Bye. Okay. Animals do make weird noises. They do. <laughs> um, Big cats can make weird noises. Like yep. But Foxes do make weird noises. Have you ever heard a fox laugh? No. They make the cutest little giggling noises. No. Oh my gosh. There was when I lived in my old haunted apartment, the the patio or my my upstairs patio looked out over the woods and there was something getting killed Ooh. eaten out there one night and the screaming was like so Ugh. I think it could have just been a rabbit. Sure. And there are animals that make uh like almost human like crying sounds mm -hmm. but again this is this is like the sleep paralysis where i don't think you can attribute yeah, you every can't single write it all off write it off sure. as an animal yeah i mean it could have been but it's still creepy like yeah, totally this is creepy. That, like you said this is one of those stories where i wouldn't want to know no i would just because if it is an animal that's like in distress or dying i don't want to know that either no <laughs> But, but if it's something else, there's nothing. I'm not sure like, I want to know that either. You know, there's nothing creepier than like a human like crying coming from the woods, like yeah. wanting you to come and yeah. check it out, totally. like a mimic. But yeah, that's yeah. There's creepy. something it, so nefarious about it. Could have been an animal, but I am not saying with 100 percent right. certainty that it was. Yeah. And I, I hear a lot of like a lot of the the stories I read about hearing like the crying in the woods or the the weird sounds are southern like it's a southern thing hmm. there are some up here but a lot of the ones I read are from down south well and they talk about that in hellier speaking of hellier yeah um how in the woods the sound of I think they talk about the baby crying noises too how yeah. that's something that they hear it's down so there. I don't ever want to hear that to be honest no. with you when I'm out in the woods so no. <laughs> Stephanie we love you too thank you so much for sending yes, that thank to you, us Stephanie. it's so creepy yeah, any any sound coming from the woods is a no, especially like a crying one that you yeah. want to go check out to see what something it was. that naturally should not be happening. <laughs> yeah, why is there a baby in the woods? You know? know, that's so creepy. This next story is kind of long, but she sent it, and then she asked if I wanted more of the information from the dowsing session, and I said mm -hmm. yeah because I'm fascinated with dowsing. Mm -hmm. Like my only running with that is when we did the thing with the fur coat at Elsings mm. where I, we got the EVP mm -hmm. saying, would you wear it? Would you it? wear it? And the dowsing well, rods led us and back the, there. The dowsing rods took you, like, I think you That's hid. That's an area of the store we never went no, to. No, like you hid. Wasn't it you that hid the coat? The coat. Yeah. And Anne, was it Anne? It was Anne. Anne was using the dowsing rods and she was downstairs when you hid the coat and she came upstairs and the rods turned and it led her directly to where you had hidden it. And it was in this weird back corner of the store where there's that we, nothing. That we never go to. Yeah, we never went to that corner. So it was very bizarre. Yeah, so I'm like fascinated with the dowsing rods. Yeah. Those don't creep me out. Uh but she asked if I wanted more information on the dowsing session. So I said, yeah. I used yeah. to have a pair of dowsing rods and I don't know what I did with them. I remember you I've having, never been able to find them. I remember you having a pair of them. I wonder what happened to those. Yeah, I don't know. Huh. But I would love if we go on investigation. I also had a pendulum, so maybe I, I got creeped out by that stuff because it's similar to a Ouija board. And maybe one day I was like, you know, I don't think it's safe to be using these. Watch and maybe tonight, I you got get ready rid for bed and the, the dowsing rods are laying on the bed when you go up there. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> 
<laughs> Kurt's really trying to creep me out. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to watch reruns of Seinfeld before bed. <laughs> I was going to say, if something happens, don't Gilmore text Girls. me because you know where I'm going to be. Sleeping. Yeah. Um, He'll wake up in the morning and be like, gee, I hope that all worked out for you. <laughs> I wake up at one in the morning. <laughs> That's um, true. You might be awake when it's happening. <laughs> it was funny when, when you guys did the asylum, like mm-hmm. the asylum tour, because Rhonda was texting me because you guys were coming back and it was two in the morning mm-hmm. and I'm already up. So she was texting me about everything that happened. You know, it's just I couldn't have been there for the we're early stuff. We're just going to bed. So this is kind of a longer story, but I'm fascinated with dowsing rods. Like if we ever do an investigation again, I would like to bring dowsing rods. So this is from Jennifer, okay, loyal stranger Jennifer. Kind of long, so I didn't want to call this in. After spending most of my life being interested in history, the unexplained cryptids, ghost stories, I finally decided to join an investigation group. I have really enjoyed it, but my twin girls who are 14 became interested as well. I thought the best way to deal with it would be to take them on an investigation to a local area home that I knew about. Somewhere safe that we could be without a super high scare factor. Most of my family decided they wanted to see what it was really like. I wanted to give them a responsible look at a proper investigation. I will give you a brief highlight of some of the things that happened. The house was once a residence in the middle of a small town near where I live. The house is about a hundred years old and is just run of the mill. Three levels, main floor, basement, and attic space turned into a living space. The house is known to be active and is open and used by paranormal groups, which is cool. I wish we could go there. Yeah. Only one of my daughters was with us. Yeah. I gotta stop doing that. (laughs) You're so Wisconsin today. Only one of my daughters was with us at the time of our walkthrough with the owners. We did an initial sweep of the main room with EMF, and I placed the EMF meter on the back of an armchair, and it was still at 0.0. We were chatting as I was talking about what we should do as no one was with me that had ever done this before. There was a box of snacks left by the owners for us and had chips and things and Twinkies. That's awesome. That reminds me of Elsings. Yep. Yeah. Popcorn, cookies, stomach aches. I always think of that when, (laughs) when Vicky saw, like it was me, Barry, and Vicky in the, in the basement. Or no, was it Barry or was it some? No, it was Barry. Me? Uh, was it the face? Yeah. That was it the was three you. of us. That was, it was the just night the three... I had the breathing. Yeah. It, we're, we're sitting down in the basement and Vicky saw the face like come together yeah. in a mist and she freaked out and I didn't see it because I ate so many cookies of hers <laughs> that I was laying on the floor with a stomach You didn't stomach feel good. Ache. Yes. <laughs> I didn't feel yes. good. I ate so many of her chocolate chip cookies. Oh, goodness. But yeah, snacks on investigations are good, but they can also... Backfire. They can also... In more immigrants. ways than one. Yeah, exactly. In more ways her than bathroom one. bathroom got a workout. Let's just... <laughs> <laughs> that bathroom was haunted. <laughs> My brother, who is a joker, made a comment that he wondered if they were original to the house. We all burst out laughing, at which point I, facing the EMF meter, saw it spike up to 26.5. That's so weird when it like responds to mm-hmm. something. I had never seen an EMF meter go that high. The baseline around the house was no more than a 4.6 at the fridge. That's a huge spike. That is a huge spike. Like whatever it you made it mad by like joking about it this got me excited but everyone else got on edge we tried going upstairs and doing a normal call and response session with no activity no noises nothing completely quiet this area was supposed to be very active by the way after the original walkthrough no one wanted to go back to the basement this included me Everyone was regrouped in the dining room and living room areas, and we put out some light up cat balls. I never thought about bringing those on an investigation. I see them on a lot of investigations. They roll, they light up, and K2 meters. We started to just talk and laugh. They actually used those at the asylum. Really? Mm -hmm. Like the cat balls? Yeah, they did. We should use. We should use those. We started to just talk and laugh with each other as families will do, kidding and telling jokes or funny stories. My brother again told a funny joke, and the cat ball in the living room lit up. We began to ask questions, and it lit up again, and this time it would not shut off. So we changed out the ball to see if it was a malfunction. The new cat ball did not light up, but neither did the original one light up. Hmm. We had left it on even though we moved it just to see. At this point, my other daughter, M got there. She is the one I feel is empathic, so I told them before she got there not to tell her anything or what rooms were active. I wanted to see how she would act. 
We showed her around the house casually, and I asked her where she wanted to go. She told me where she did not want to go. The three rooms slash areas she said no to were the three hot spots of the house. The front living room, where the cat ball had just gone off before she got there, the upstairs, and the back bedroom. I did let her go to the bedroom, though. We did a dowsing rod session in there. I tried them, M tried them, and my sister tried them. M and I got good results. My sister could never get the rods to move in any meaningful way. I think I think a lot of how dowsing rods work depend on the person totally. operating mm-hmm. them. We you also, also have to hold them correctly. Correctly, like loosely. Yeah. But I, want, I really want to get a pair of those. We also did not get the responses I was expecting based on the story of the house that we were given. This, I think, leads to the point that I was not controlling a yes or no response because I got the opposite of what I thought was going to happen. If it is to be believed, we were talking to a young 20-year-old who died in a house two doors down in a very sad circumstance, and she thought her story was lost. We wondered if maybe she found her way there because of all the investigations and she wanted to have her story heard. We acknowledged her. We took a break and went back to the sitting area and were again just relaxing, deciding what to do next, and laughing again when the cat ball next to me on the side table lit up. It wouldn't light up again at any questions we asked. It only lit up when we went back to talking and telling stories about each other. That's weird. My sister-in-law said she saw a black shadow in the front foyer area. More things happen around my brother, but usually only when he said something funny. We tried another session of dowsing rods in the bedroom as my brother wanted to give it a chance. Again, the rods would never hold still or move in any structured way for him. They did stay still for M, but didn't give any answers, so they had me try. I tried, quote, are you still here? The rod said yes. Do you want to tell us your name? They said no. Are you afraid I will find out who you were? They said yes. I told the spirit I wouldn't look for any records. Do you still want to answer our questions? It said no. So you don't want to talk to us anymore? It said no. Do you want us to leave? I was thinking it was going to be yes, but it said no. That's weird. That is weird. My brother at this point wondered out loud if this person was just happy to have happy people in the house laughing and telling stories instead of people there asking spirits to do things and knock on walls. So I asked if she was just enjoying us being there and the rod swung to yes. We told her we were going to put everything away except the cat balls and we're just going to sit and enjoy each other's company and have fun. And if she was happy, she could touch the cat balls or not. That's just what we did. We put everything away and sat for about 30 to 40 minutes more, just laughing and telling stories. And the cat ball next to me on the table would light up from time to time when something funny was said. I think that's really cool. That I love this idea. Yeah. yeah. Instead I, of asking it to perform You on just command, wanted to just be happy hanging like, out with you. Yeah. yeah. At this point, I then saw... I then thought I saw the black shadow in the foyer. We packed up again for the night and thanked her for spending time with us. As we were packing up, my brother who had poo-pooed the shadow issue stopped what he was doing because he then saw the shadow out of the corner of his eye. This experience changed the way I will go about at future investigations for sure. My family wants to know when and where we are going next. Also afterward, I told M that she had hit the most active spots in the house. I think that opened her eyes a bit to what she was already feeling and sensing. So I know that was long, but thanks for reading it, Kurt. I do have a page-long recounting of the dowsing rod session, but that could get boring to read. But if you're interested, let me know. And I said, yeah, I want to know because I'm interested in the dowsing rod stuff. So then she wrote back, here's the recounting of the first dowsing rod session. This was only the second time I'd ever used them, and I don't usually use them. I did it because I was with my family, and they wanted to try them. There were some K2 hits, but we discounted them due to a static ball thing that was plugged into the outlet near the bed. I started off with the rods and got them perpendicular and still, and then I started the session. I asked, are you male? It responded, no. Are you female? Responded, yes. Are you Deb? Responded, no. Are you Rita? Responded no. And then in parentheses, we had been given these names with the house as being part of the story. Then we asked, did you live here? It responded no. And then we asked, are you someone that we aren't aware of? And it responded yes. This is where I got a thought. We had been told the house two doors down 
that it was possible and it was rumored in the mid 60s and 70s it could have had le- illegal abortions done in the basement. Mm. I don't know if any of this is true or just neighborhood gossip. So I thought maybe she came from there. I stated that we were glad to speak with her and that we recognize her. We asked, are you over 20? She responded, no. We asked, are you under 20? She also responded, no. And then we asked, You're exactly are you 20? 20? And she responded, yes. Oh, interesting. So that's cool. And then we asked, has your story been forgotten? And she responded, yes. M wanted a turn. We gave them to her. She steadied the rods and brought them straight and still. She asked, when were you born? 1930s? No. 1940s? No. 1950s? Yes. So I say, well, she must have died around the early 1970s. So we start asking about music, like who she did like. We went through various artists. We asked Elvis. It was a slight yes. Then I said, oh, well, I liked him. Then the rods became fully crossed. We all giggled. We asked, did you like the Beatles? There was no reply. We asked, did you like the monkeys? And there was a quick yes. Mm -hmm. So then we all sang the monkeys theme song. Oh, I love it. We asked, did you like ABBA? They responded with a yes. (laughs) We asked, do you like country music? And that was a fast no. (laughs) We asked, do you like Janis Joplin? That was a no. We asked, did you like Woodstock? And there was no reply. M wanted to ask about her favorite color. M went through a lot with either no's or no reply response from the rods. Then when she got to pink and purple, both of those got a yes. My sister then wanted more details, and she tried, but we never got any good movement with the rods. They were extremely still in her hands. We tried to get her, we tried to get the spirit's name by going through the alphabet. I did wonder out loud if she had been listening to me talk about how I do the research on the sites we go to, and I wondered if even though she wanted to be heard, she didn't want to be known. If the dowsing rods are to be trusted, that would pan out in the second session I talked about as I don't think she wanted me to research her. So I didn't, and I didn't research the house down the street either. So there it is from Jen. Hmm. Very interesting. That is super interesting. Like, I don't know. I I love the idea that the spirit was just happy to have you there and not actively pursuing it, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know? I love the idea, too, that... um dowsing rods are a way to communicate in real time rather than listening to an EVP later yeah. and realizing there was an opportunity to communicate yeah, and you missed you out. Yeah, you ask more questions yeah. about something and you didn't. That's why I, I also, the next next time, if we ever investigate again, I would like to do short EVP sessions and listen back right away yes. to be able to respond to anything we get. Like, there are so many things we didn't do back in the day that I would love to do now. Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, yeah. we were we were like noobs back then. With yeah, the, well, and it, the methods have really evolved since. Oh, then. they have evolved since yeah. then. It's just crazy. So you want a pair of dowsing rods? Yeah, like I'm I'm fascinated with dowsing rods. Like yeah. I feel like I feel like you and I are, you know, am like partially empaths. Sure. Uh, and I think we would be good with the dowsing rods. And again, even though with the dowsing rods, you're kind of asking something to control you, mm-hmm. that doesn't freak me out, I guess, in a weird... Like, it just doesn't. Like, you would think it would, where, like, yeah, the Estes method because how is that different from a Ouija board? Out. I don't know. I don't know. But the you're dowsing, asking the, it to yeah, move you're asking the planchette through you. Yeah, you're asking it to move the planchette, through where here you. you're asking it to move these... You mm-hmm. Move maybe the muscles yeah. in your hand to move that, but dowsing rods don't freak me out. But the Estes method yeah. does. That's funny. I'm weird. Well, I'll do the Estes method while you do dowsing rods. That works for me. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a date. All right, Krista has the next story. We're over two hours now, and just a heads up, and I still have two stories to read, and, and we have one voicemail. Voice yeah, so do you have another story to read? Uh, I believe so. Okay. Gotta get my glasses back. This will be a longer episode. It will be. It's okay though. People like that. Hey, Kurt and Krista, I have a few minor brushes with the paranormal from my childhood. I never recount these stories with people in my life aside from my husband because they aren't all that exciting. And also I doubt anyone would take me seriously as it happened when I was about 10. I'll preface by saying that all of my experiences took place within the master bedroom of my childhood home, which I shared with my mother because we have such a large family. On one occasion, I lay in bed with my eyes closed but still awake. I think I was trying to take a nap, and I sensed someone walk into the room. This would not alarm me at first because it was normal for family members to walk in and out. I remember the sound of the door swinging open, hearing footsteps cross the carpet towards me, and finally a slight gust of wind hitting my face. Then it was quiet. 
I opened my eyes expecting to see my sibling or someone rummaging around in the master bedroom, but there was no one. This is weird because when someone comes into the room, you always hear them leave. Mm-hmm. Another time, I found I was locked out of my bedroom. I assumed my sister Skylar had locked herself in to use the bathroom or something because everyone else in the house was accounted for. I banged on the door and yelled for her to come out in a very sibling-esque fashion. I listened and heard the very distinct click of the door unlocking from the other side. I walked in and again found no one. That's creepy. That is creepy. (laughs) I looked behind the door under the bed and in the closet, thinking Skylar was playing a joke and waiting to scare me, but no one was in the room. How is this not exciting? This is a good story. I got scared and ran back through the house and found my sister in the kitchen. I would hear things go bump in the night, sometimes waking up to sounds like my closet door opening and closing again or scratching sounds on the wall across from my bed. Scratching is a big no. Big Big no. no. But hands down, the most terrifying experience I've ever had is the night I woke up to someone or something standing over our bed, breathing on us as we slept. More breathing, more someone by your bed. Mm. Seems to be a common theme here today. I say we because, again, I shared a bed with my mom, who was a heavy sleeper and never once woke up during this horrid encounter. First, let me explain our sleeping arrangement so you have a clear idea of the setting. Our bed was pushed into a corner, so only the bottom and right edge of the bed was free to walk around. My mother slept on the outside edge and I slept on the inside next to the wall. So I wake up in the middle of the night, no telling what time it is, but it's pitch black and I hear the sound of very heavy breathing. Not like the sound of someone trying to catch their breath after running a marathon, but more like a large animal blowing gusts of wind out of its snout. No. (laughs) There's something something like really demonic about that actually. I immediately became frozen with fear. I listened intently and didn't dare move a muscle. It stood next to my feet at the bottom of the bed. Now I cannot begin to emphasize how hard this thing was breathing. I felt strong gusts of wind through the comforter. I remember thinking that no living being, human or otherwise, had the capacity to blow the covers back just from exhaling. That's so creepy. It's so creepy. It stood at my feet for a minute before it started to move along the perimeter of the bed. I could sense it walking back and forth from the sound and the feel of its breath. It did this for at least an hour. (laughs) And I was awake that entire time listening and trying to understand what was happening. I was far too scared to try sitting up and reaching for a light or something. I even wondered to myself if I was having a nightmare, but of course I wasn't. I was fully conscious. Eventually, the breathing just suddenly stopped. I lied awake for a while before falling asleep again, and soon it was morning. I told my mom what happened, and she brushed it off. No doubt she thought I was having childish delusions, but what delusions last for an entire hour or more? I remember how terrified I was, and I will always carry that memory with me. Oddly enough, I think that was the last paranormal experience I've ever had. I went through a weird weird phase where strange things happened to me, and it's like once I hit 11 or 12, they just kind of stopped. I feel like we just had someone we just, say somebody that. Somebody did just say that, and I think that's when, I think that's when your... Your hormones are kicking no, in? No, but that's when you're, like, you're more suggestible to see this stuff when you're a kid because yes. you don't know you're not supposed to be right. seeing this. And once you get to that certain age... You've heard enough you've people, heard enough say, people you're say you're imagining, you're imagining it. it that you start to just not see it. Yeah, that's true. Um, which makes me look back now as an adult and wonder if it was real or my kid brain really did fabricate everything. Anyway, thanks for reading. I'm a fan of the show and I appreciate the work you guys put into making each episode. Best wishes from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Louisiana. April. April. Thank you, April. Thank you, April. I feel like I just How bashed. is that not super exciting? Oh, these are boring stories. That's I don't tell boring. anybody. Are you That's kidding me? That's creepy. Like it's something so is creepy. like... like stalking you also, almost in I your feel bed. Like when people have experiences like that, like I did, it it's very brief. Yeah. And hour yeah i would have died (laughs) an hour yep that's so creepy i don't know what to make of that no i don't either there's something like it sounds demonic but like the first thing that popped in my head was like a bigfoot type creature also bigfoot that crossed my mind too that's so creepy because i've heard you hear tales of like the inhuman lung capacity that bigfoot has that's so so creepy thank you april yes thank you 
Chris will be thinking of that tonight when she's getting ready for bed. Ugh. Next up, we have Tanner's voicemail. Oh. I want to say this one does not sound like the best quality because it was sent to me on Facebook Messenger. Oh, okay. And I could not, for the life of me, figure out how to get it off as a sound file. Oh. So I had to use my digital recorder to record. <laughs> oh, no. I, I could not figure out, like, when people call and leave a voicemail... You can download number, it as an MP3. I can MP3. download it as an MP3 yeah. on Facebook Messenger. I don't know how to download. Huh. I think the only way I could do that was to download my entire history of my Facebook yeah. Messenger. Okay. So you may do. it doesn't sound the best, but I love this. This is just a, a sweet little story. I like this one. So this is from Tanner. Hey, guys. I love your podcast. I've been binging it a lot lately because I drive for work. So I have six hours during the day basically to listen um, to different stuff. And most of it for the last few weeks has been the strange sessions, just all sorts of different episodes from all seven seasons. But I just had a really, it was really weird because I moved to Utah for school um, about a year ago. But I've always had family out here, so I've always visited. And when I was... When I was a teenager, I was really into geocaching, and I would come out to Utah during the summers, um, and I've only found a handful of geocaches in Utah, because I'm from Colorado, so I found a bunch in Colorado, but only a handful in Utah, and I'm driving for work, I'm out delivering packages, and I'm listening to your guys' episode about synchronicity. And I drive past a fire hydrant where there, it was one of the only geocaches I found in Utah was at that specific fire hydrant because I remember it was down the street from my great aunt's house and me and my cousin walked over and found the geo, the, the micro geocache in the fire hydrant. And I'm driving past, and I notice the fire hydrant, and I think to myself, huh, maybe I should start geocaching again. And in that exact moment, Kurt started talking about the first time he met Aaron, um, and you guys talked about geocaching, and then you guys shared have shared 12 years of geocaching. And it was really weird that that synchronicity happened while I was listening to your guys' episode about synchronicity. And it was just sort of a surreal kind of out-of-body experience when it happened because I had just listened to the episode about synchronicity. I didn't really understand it. And then you guys said, um, you can't really understand it until it happens to you. And then it happened to me in that moment. And it was just really weird and strange. And I thought I would share with you guys. I love that. I know that. I love that. You know, like it's. I love the way he. I want to know did he start geocaching again? Then I, I want. I, the way he described it is perfect because when you have a strong synchronicity happens, it is almost like an out of body experience mm-hmm. where it like. It's hard to explain, like the feeling you get when something like that happens. And so, it's that thing where you're like, I got, I got to tell somebody. Yeah. Like this is amazing. I got to like, tell somebody. I love synchronicities, but I love when I help them. Yeah come through you're part of the when i'm part of the synchronicity and that's so cool because i know the feeling he's talking about i know how that stuff happens totally. and it's funny to me that aaron and i geocaching happened because of a synchronicity or because we both happened to be at that pizza place yeah. out in the country that same night and we like if that would not if we would have both not been out there that night we wouldn't be what we are now yeah so it's just like weird how couple. stuff lines up <laughs> and I'm, i love that 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 voicemail yeah, is like one of my all-time favorites like i love that that happened fire hydrant caches can be a pain in the butt because they're always usually really small sure. and they're hard to find yeah. a fire hydrant so it's just so cool that that happened i love that voicemail so thank you so thank much you, Tanner. Tanner. love that i was able to help with a synchronicity yeah. and to show you what they're like yeah I think that's so cool. Me too. So thanks, Tanner. Uh, Our next story. Hey, Krista and Kurt. I am returning your call for listener stories, spooky or otherwise. You read my stories on the last listener stories episode regarding my encounter with something resembling a chupacabra and my grandpa's encounter with La Tulivela. 
La Tula Heva. I remember us doing that. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then he puts in parentheses, happy to have earned a nope from Krista. That's like a badge <laughs> of honor when Krista nopes uh, your story, I guess. Yeah. To preface this next story, I do not believe that I saw a ghost or felt a presence or anything to that effect. I do, however, now understand how someone can have their perceptions turned around. A couple of years back, I was able to visit the Queen Mary in Long Beach. Super jealous because cool. I want to visit. Yeah. And participated in a tour of, a ship, of, the, of the ship. While they do offer guided investigations, this was just a general ghost slash history tour. The guide was great, and the Queen Mary was truly an awe-inspiring ship to walk around. That is, until you have to do it alone. After finishing the tour and having a couple of drinks at the bar, we decided to leave. One member of our group walked out first to use the bathroom while we stayed behind to pay. We waited in the lobby for our friend for about 10 minutes before deciding to go look for him, but had no luck. At that point, my wife and I decided to split up to see if we could find him elsewhere on the boat. Again, I don't think I experienced anything paranormal, but walking around that ship by myself after midnight was haunting in its own right. When you look down a hallway, it felt like a like it extended forever. Mm -hmm. It gave me the same feeling of looking over the edge of a tall building where the ground just seems to keep getting further and further away and your vision becomes a pinprick. I the totally can imagine. I know, they I use totally that in movies too. a lot. I totally can too. The soft movement of the ship made my steps uneasy. Walking on the deck without any life or activity felt wrong. I got so into my own head, I was convinced that I would see a ghost. After 20 minutes or so of looking, my wife asked the ticket agent if they had seen our friend. We were pointed to the parking lot where his yellow hoodie was clearly visible by our car. Getting off the Queen Mary felt like taking off a constricting jacket. I love that description. Mm. All of that tension and anxiety gave way. I knew I was psyching myself out, but I had never felt that way before, let alone somewhere with such a ghoulish history. I would love to visit again and actually stay the night. The ship was beautiful. I don't think I would be out walking around it alone, though. Thanks for everything, and as always, stay strange. And shoot, I forgot to put the name on there. But thank you so much for yeah. that story. Like, I want to see the Queen Mary. Oh, I'm so jelly. So bad. Yeah, me too. But I can, like, I, like, he does such a good job of describing the feeling of, like, looking down the corridor mm -hmm. and it just extending, like, into infinity. Mm -hmm. And who's to say that something on that ship wasn't making you feel yeah. uneasy? Absolutely. You know, because I do believe that boat is haunted from the stuff that I hear yeah. about it. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm so jealous because I really, you know, and we got the money. We should, we should do that. We always say that, but I feel like you and I are such homebodies yep that we just feel like we get to can i do an armchair like, visit? like the <laughs> idea of doing an actual trip somewhere is so daunting to us yeah that we don't even want to deal with it right you know maybe we need a third host that would make us actually get out and do this stuff yeah, no kidding i don't know but thank you so much for that story yeah, like i you. love that story nothing even though supposedly nothing paranormal happened i think that was paranormal i think that was paranormal yeah i do too and i believe krista has the last oh, story okay. for this episode Sweet. This is from Chris. He is an Insta listener. Uh, hi, Kurt. Oh, let me put my glasses on because I already messed up. Hi, Chris and Kurt. I have a story I've been wanting to send in for quite some time now. When I was a boy in middle school, my parents moved into a house in a fairly rough neighborhood. It was only temporary as we were having a home built in the country. At first, it seemed like a decent place to live. However, as time passed, we came to realize this was not the case. The basement of this house was a pretty scary place, especially for a kid that had to go down and help with the laundry. In that basement was a wall with a doorway that went back into a darker area. No light back there at all, even during the daytime, and the fact that it had windows that were not covered. None of the family ever went back there, as it always felt like we were being watched. It also contained the remains of an old furnace, similar to the one in the movie Home Alone. I know exactly <laughs> I totally, what he's talking about. I totally about. know what he's talking about, too. There were many times that we would be watching television or playing in the middle room or even making snacks in the kitchen when we would hear the sounds of tools falling on concrete. That happened to me. Oh, I should tell that story. I think I have already. Those sounds always came from the basement. My dad kept all of his tools in the car for his job. It's such a creepy thing. It is. In the upstairs of the house were the bedrooms, two at the top of the staircase and one at the end of a long hallway. That one, of course, was my room. And all the bedrooms and the bathroom at the opposite end of the hall all had windows. The rooms were very well lit, but the hallway between my parents' room and mine was always pitch black. Whenever I would go upstairs, I always ran down the hallway to my well-lit room. 
In that same hallway was also a small door. I'm assuming to an attic. We call it the bad kid room. <laughs> <laughs> it hadn't. That's me saying that. Whenever Jim and I see a small door like bad that, we call room. it the bad kid room. Yeah. It had no way of opening it from the outside, and it seemed to be nailed shut from the inside. That's creepy. Whenever I was in my room at night, it always felt as if there was something looking at me Ugh. through the crack in my door. My family hated that house. It wasn't till my brothers and I were older that our parents told us that an older man died in the house before we had moved in. We had just recently found out that house was demolished. My mom said that it needed to be torn down. Needless to say, it left its mark on me. Thanks for listening, Chris. That's so creepy. Like the sound of the tools yeah. falling in the basement when nobody's down there creeps me out. I think I told this story once, but I babysat as a teenager and there I was babysitting for a family in our small little neighborhood just like up the road from our house and the kids were sleeping i was lying on their couch watching tv and i heard what sounded like a tool like a wrench or something drop and hit the concrete floor in their garage and a man swearing and i terrible babysitter i didn't do anything i just I laid there telling this story <laughs> i probably should have gotten up and checked it out I was too afraid to move and I was not sleeping. I'm not somebody who falls asleep very easily. So I was not asleep. Um, but yeah, that totally reminded me of that because I can hear that sound in my head still. It's just, it's weird that somebody did die there too. Yeah. That it's, it's always like fascinating to me when there's a spot in the house that people just won't go to yeah. and they might not necessarily tell each other. It's just like... And there's no rational reason Yeah, it's for just it. like they don't like going there and it's just a thing. Like they don't communicate that with each other yeah. it's just it freaks him out i love the the him talking about how he would run down the hallway yeah it's like the equivalent of running up the stairs yes. because yep. something might grab you from behind yep. that's awesome thank you so <laughs> yeah. much chris, thank you, chris for sending that in and i think that's it for the stories it holy is. cow you guys you guys two hours and 24 minutes it's it's, it's gonna be about a two and a half hour episode yeah. you guys really came through on this one thank you what was that me Nothing. no i just heard something what it sounded almost like a cat like a meow. <laughs> I didn't hear that. That was weird. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much. You guys really came through on this. Uh, again, I thought that we weren't going to get... We I'm going to listen back to that audio to see if I it was really it faint, but it sounded mm. like a meow. It like from been where? Some, like from this side. Okay. It could have been outside. I'm sure it was nothing. If it was, We've never heard anything from outside before. I don't know. It, it was really faint, but it sounded to me like a meow. Um, okay. I didn't mean to freak you out. It, uh -huh. Like, it wasn't anything scary. It sounded okay. like a cat meow. Well, I don't have a cat, Kurt. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for sending these in. Yeah. Like, you guys make this episode what oh, it is. And yeah. it's one of my favorites yeah, every season. Yeah, everybody loves the Listener Stories episodes. So now we do actually, we did get one yesterday, uh, a question, a oh, listener sweet. question. Okay. This, this one will be a relatively quick one because we're getting a little long in the episode. Mm -hmm. They wrote, hey, Kurt and Krista. I am relatively new to the podcast, so I'm not that far in. And you guys probably already got this question. I think we have. But because I'm going to be listening to future episodes, what are both of your favorite episodes of The Strange Sessions? Thank you guys so much for what you do. Well, thank you, and you're welcome. Yes. Um, missing 411, obsies. EVP when we talk about like yeah. our experiences yes. and go through all the EVPs we've caught. Those are like the classics. Those are the yeah, ones that those people are the two comment big ones. on. Um, Maura Murray, I'm just kidding. It's a terrible episode. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want a recipe for a, a steak, steak burrito. burrito. Um, the scary wood stories from Reddit. Yeah. That's still and one it's of so my favorites. It's so funny because that one was just supposed to be like a nothing. A filler episode. Like a, yeah. a nothing burger placeholder. <laughs> Everybody yeah. loved that episode. Totally. Um, I think those are my favorites. My favorites. Bigfoot, of course. Crystal loves the Bigfoot. My favorites are, everybody knows what my favorite one is because it's my favorite story. The just Bet Sphere. The Bet Sphere. Like, <laughs> I love the Bet Sphere just because it's such a rabbit hole story. Yeah. Uh, could you, could, Captain Coochie's Key Lime Pie. Captain Coochie's Key Lime Pie, just because it's so weird. Yeah. Uh, Bet Sphere is my favorite. And I just always remember you and I both had colds during that one. Mm. So our voices were a little weird. But oh, really? I love the Bet Sphere. Like, it is my number one bucket list thing to actually hold the actual Bet Sphere in my hands. Doubt it's ever going to happen. But I love the Bet Sphere. I also love the Trini Gibson. The Trini mm, Gibson yeah. episode is one of my favorites because I felt such a connection to, to her, her story. story. Yeah. 
I think because I'm working with kids that mm-hmm. age. And it's just the weirdness of the story, not in a missing four in one way, but I think it's a, it's a true crime. I think yeah. it's true crime. I do too. Like, especially with them having her jewelry and stuff. Like, I want... So much I sketch wa- about I that. I badly want her to be found mm-hmm. and to be able to be put to rest. Mm-hmm. Like, I love the Trini Gibson one. And one of Chris my... Chris Kramer's in the same... I love the Chris Kramer's in the, the yes. same room. Yeah, oh, I forget we did that. I know. That one has a ton of views on youtube like over five thousand uh, views i hope i hope we did it justice i hope we did a good job with that episode yeah uh but one of my favorites is and i go back to this all the time i i think it was the solway firth spaceman oh, picture and yeah. you doing the paulding lights <laughs> yeah and why i love that episode it was one of our relatively early ones yeah but when I got done editing that episode, that is the first episode where I was like, wow, I'm like, we have something good here. Yeah. That was like that was like the first one where I felt good. I'm like, dang, that was a fun episode because it was funny. We, you know, and that was like the first one where I'm like, wow, we might be on to something hmm. here. So that's one I of love my that. favorites. Yeah. So there you go. Those are our answers. Yeah. Uh, there's none that I hate. Even the more Murray one I love because it's given us years of laughter. Yeah, I hated that one to start, but so many people say that they love that episode that yeah. I can't hate it anymore. Yep. Uh, to me, that episode is the epitome of me and this podcast. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Terrible like, I love that when people tell us their favorites. There's such a different mixture yeah. of episodes that yep. that that people just like them. So I agree. It still amazes me that people listen. It's like the same. Like who would have ever thought when we started this what it would become? Yeah, you know? I certainly didn't. I certainly didn't I either. Still don't. <laughs> same here. Uh, as far as song suggestions, Krista does. She says she I has do. one. I have one. I only have one, so I'm glad you have one today. Uh, my song, I believe it's Trance. It's like one of my dancey songs. Like, I don't know the difference. Between... I love that you have dancey songs. Well, Kurt. I don't know the difference between trance, EDM. Yeah. Like, I don't know any of that stuff. And this song must have been in a commercial somewhere or something where I first heard it. But I love this song. So here's some of the YouTube comments about this song. Somebody writes... I was 25 when the song first came out, and I'm still listening to it 17 years later. A true classic. Somebody else writes, this song never grows old. Best trance song ever. Somebody else writes, this song still feels just as euphoric as it did almost 20 years ago. Someone else writes, I spent 20 minutes trying to find this song via random lyrics that pop into my mind. I love this song, and I'm so happy I found it. Somebody else writes, the song has aged so gracefully. I used to bump this song back in high school, and now here I am 29 years old, and I'm still bumping this song. Turns out it wasn't a phase. It was a way of life. Somebody else writes, 20 years ago, this banger dropped, and it's still fresh as a daisy today. I first heard this in 2003 on a music channel on Old Sky Analog Satellite. The channel didn't display the track or artist. I was so lost in the song that I couldn't even remember any of the lyrics. Now, back in 2003, searching for songs was difficult because we didn't have Shazam or any lyric websites. Two years later, I stumbled across the song completely by accident. My life was complete. And then somebody else, somebody writes, and I love this. I totally agree with this. This is the song I want playing at the moment of my death. And mm-hmm. I totally agree with this. Like, I want to go out sword fighting zombies. <laughs> <laughs> and this this is the song wow. that would, this is the song that would play when I okay. die. And it is by Motorcycle and it is the song As the Rush Comes. Okay. This is one of those songs that you're going to be like never heard Hurts. of it. And then once yeah, you hear definitely. it you're going to be like I know this song from somewhere. Huh. It is As the Rush Comes by Motorcycle. I freaking love this song. I feel like I've discovered a lot of good music through commercials. Yeah. Oh, totally. Totally. And this had to be in a commercial because this isn't something that I would listen to like back in the day. Like I was never a dance music guy, but I had to have heard this somewhere because this song has always been with me in my head Hmm. and uh, just love it. As the Rush Comes by Motorcycle. That's my song. So my song, to my knowledge, you're only going to find it on YouTube because um, this is just not something you're going to hear on the radio. But the artist's name is Ren, R-E-N. The song is Hi, Ren. He has quite a bit of stuff out. Um, He's from the UK. 
Uh, but this is the first thing I ever heard of his. I think a lot of people stumble upon him this way. Um, it's nine minutes. I'm going to post the video. Um, but it is, I, it's so hard to describe what it is. Do you know Plan B at all? No. So I've it, actually, it was a dude who played the guitar. Yeah, it's and weird you mentioned rapped. that because that there's a there's a uh, subreddit called Music Suggestions where you're like, this is what I listen to. Suggest some new mm-hmm. music for me to listen to. Oh, and gotcha. Plan B showed up on there this week, and I, I, That's yeah, weird. it is weird, and oh. I didn't look into it. But I thought it was like, I remember the name. So it's weird that you're mentioning that because I did see that this week. So what's interesting is that he actually compares himself to Plan B and Eminem in the song. And it's he's he's rapping, but he's playing the guitar and he sings at one point. And it's almost like watching a play like this. And it's all done in one take. There's no it's him and a guitar. And it is about his struggle with mental health. It's about his inner critic. It's basically him having an argument with his inner critic. And it's just like, if you've ever been through anything, if you have self-doubt, if you've struggled with mental illness, you will be touched by this song. It's like, it's incredible. And now I'm obsessed with watching reaction videos over of this (laughs) video. But this is someone who's virtually unknown unless you're on youtube and this video's had i think last time i looked it was 15 million views which is insane but i i can't recommend it enough it just it's it it will touch you in some way if you've ever dealt with That's anything cool. in your life that so cool. hi ren love- the artist is ren everything he does is in my opinion he's like an artistic genius i love it's that amazing. you like reaction videos now because oh like gosh, i said I rob squad so reactions i can't get enough of watching them like watch a song for the first time like they they did and to me, I get, again, this is still one of the best songs ever written, Spandau Ballet's True, from the 80s. You know okay. this song. Probably. You totally do. But it's funny because when they do the reaction to this, they play like the first two or three notes and they shut it off and they're like, we know this song. This is this is the, tr- you know, uh-huh-huh uh-huh song. Okay. And then they, <laughs> they listen to the actual, they only know that part and they listen to the actual song and they're like, oh my God, this is a good song. Like mm. I love Rob Squad reactions. I just do. I love, I'm getting so into watching people react to yeah. stuff on YouTube. So I'm going to have to check your guy out because that yeah. sounds really cool. Yeah, I'll post it on the Facebook page. So too. there are our song suggestions for this week. Time yeah. for the deets. Deets. You can email us at thestrangesessions at gmail.com. Now, Twitter. It's not even Twitter anymore. It's X. What? He changed the name to X. Okay. Uh, we should just I didn't get, even know that. We should just get rid of it. Like, we should just get rid of I our Twitter. I figure out how to log in. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> but it's not Twitter I anymore. Should. He changed it to just an X. Stupid. And now he's doing something where you're not going to get advertisements on there unless you pay. Like, it's going down. The, it's it's circling the drain of the That's toilet. so weird. It really is. So we are temporarily on Twitter. Nobody's getting content session. from us there. So no. So hopefully, hopefully you're not just following us Maybe on I'll there. try to figure that out today. Uh, Krista does a great job on Instagram at the Strange sh- Sessions. Strange Sessions. The, sta- the Strange <laughs> Sessions. I was channeling Sean Connery there. <laughs> uh, you can send postcards and snail mail to the Strange Sessions, P.O. Box 434, Manitowoc. Ooh, my ear just high, did a high pitch thing. Manitowoc, Wisconsin, 54221-0434. Maybe that's what you heard before. No, it was a cat. <laughs> uh, you can... You can call our lonely little phone line, which a lot of you did for the thank for the episode. You. So thank it's you. So it's not lonely. It, it's content for now. Mm-hmm. At 920-443-9602. And you guys did an awesome job of sending listener stories to the strange session stories at gmail.com. And I think that's it for this episode. We gotta wrap it up because it's getting long. It and is. I have got to pee. So oh my do I. God. <laughs> so, that's so funny. Now we're gonna both pee, not at the same time, nope. because that would I be only awkward. Have one bathroom. That would be awkward. <laughs> and then we're gonna segue to the side sessions yep. with a fun little historical thing that I knew nothing about. So thank you guys again so much for the stories. Yeah. We love you guys so much. Chris and I we are, really are gonna tour the country. We're gonna just come up and hug you at your door and tell you we love you. And give you some pickle soda to yeah. remember us by. So thank you guys so much for everything. We love you with all of our hearts. And we will see you soon. And until that time, stay, stay strange. strange.